Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another live stream. Today, we're actually going to check out the almighty finals of the Streamers' Cup tournament that has been very kindly hosted by Red vs. Blue. The almighty Red vs. Blue, who we also call RVB sometimes because, you know, when we're casting, saying Red vs. Blue gets a little... It's fine, it's fine, we love him. He's a great guy. He set up this tournament and it's the Streamers Cup. So basically, his plan was like, hey, you know what? Let's get a whole load of streamers, stick them together in a 4v4 and let them fight it out. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, I actually played as well in the Streamers Cup. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm casting these finals. I'm, I'm not playing these finals because Leggy didn't make it. But that's fine, that's fine. I played pretty bad, to be honest, because I'll be honest, man. 4v4 is one hell of a beast. That's all I can say, okay? 4v4 is very different from all the other stuff out there. So it's very hard to play. There's so much to keep in mind and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, if, if you want to see Leggy play absolutely atrociously, like horribly, then, then look for that uh, stream where, where uh, I mean, I probably played like worse I had in years. Like, it's bloody terrible. Anyway, it's fine, it's fine. Because we're going to check out the finals. Now, the finals have actually already been played, as some of you have pointed out in the live chat. Now, I do not want to see any spoilers. If I see spoilers, I will either time you out for a very long time or I will just ban you straight away, okay? So no doing that. We're no spoiling, okay? We're going to have a good time. We're going to enjoy ourselves because we are going to check out the replays. Yes, we're casting the replays. And that has some advantages with it because now you'll be able to see the entire overview of the match as opposed to just, you know, one player's point of view as they, you know, scroll around the map and, and whatever, you only see what they see. Now I can present to you the full glory, the full chaos of the 4v4. That's the idea, that's the idea. And uh, we've got some great teams here in the finals, okay? We got Team Excal versus Team Marakar, Team Excal with Dr. Goldfish, Excal himself, and Staz and Pepsi versus Team Marakar, which is Dark9, Marakar, SPL, and Hummy. Guys, this is gonna get very intense. It's a best of 13, so a race to seven victories. And uh, Dr. Goldfish is in the chat. He's like, oh, why can't I spoil? No, Dr. Goldfish, restrain, resist. You're not allowed. Uh, also, uh, anyone who's a moderator, if you see someone spoiling it in the chat, please immediately delete the message and you have my permission to time them out for at least 10 minutes, okay? At least, bare minimum. Uh, but yeah, let's fire up the game and uh, get cracking with the replays where we can see all the things of all the players. We can see what armies everyone is in a semi, you know, like manageable way. We can see their colors, we can see little player icons, we can see what they see and, and everything. This is gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Um, let me just check something here. Do we see the game? Yes, we do. Also, let me do this here real quick, because I... There we go. Okay, okay, all right. So I think we're good to go. Uh, just gonna run over some things in my head here. Is there anything else I didn't mention? Oh, right! The sponsors. So, um, it started out as a $500 uh, tournament, uh, but then other people also joined in with sponsorship. So there's $500 sponsored by Red vs. Blue, there's uh, B Legacy with $100, Arctic Dolphin $20, Alfie Ace $20, and Egg $15 for a grand total of $655. That's a lot of dollars to uh, spread around. But then again, it's a lot of players, right? I mean, if, if, you, if you have a team that wins, so there's four people who win, so, you know, it's gotta be semi-high, the prize pool. And, uh, well, Red vs. Blue delivered, right? <laughs> he made sure it happened. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Let's jump into the first game. ML Shukri in chat says, will Leggy play tonight? No, I will not. I will cast these glorious matches. Look how many. Uh, very nice stuff. And uh, I think we are good to go. There's a lot of things on my end I had to do preparation for, but I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's just uh, fire up the first match. And let's see if everything's going to work A-OK. -okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the first match. And we have over here, uh, the, okay, control bar. It was a little delayed. I got a little worried. But we have Mr. Excal as the nuke general in the back. Uh, next to him, we got the tank general that is Dr. Gofish himself. Above him, we have the blue player Pepsi that is tank general. And on the right, we have the infantry general that is Staz. They'll be facing, uh, facing off against the GLAs, which is Dark Nine here in the yellow as stealth. Next to him, we have the green player, SPL, as Demolition General. And then above him, we have the orange player, that is Marakar, as Toxin. And on the right here, we have Hummy as Stealth General. So guys, this is gonna get very intense. It is the, the famous GLA versus China match. This is literally how it starts. So in this challenge, the first match has to be like this. The second match is gonna be reversed. So 
usually the Chinas do very well in this, but let's see what happens. I mean, Team Marikar, you know, they're 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 pretty epic, right? They have a good lineup of players as well, so who knows what's gonna happen there, right? Uh, let's see if we see anything crazy out of anyone. Perhaps a Helix. And we do see an airfield going up for Staz, so he might go for a Helix here if we have a lot of War Factories out. And this is what I'm talking about. The Chinas will start pumping out a whole load of units. And the question is, can the GLAs hold? They will want to try and get some very quick map control. Get a lot of tunnels out to make sure those China units can be stopped. And make sure that this kind of money over here goes to the GLA players. In the corners, we also have like a supply dock and some oil. So this whole map, this whole diagonal line has things that the players can fight over. Has things that they want to take and get. Technical coming in. We're going to have to keep an eye on the technicals, boys, because there's going to be a lot of technicals. Oil captures, uh, very important here. Very nice bunker here with mines on it. Oh, man, it goes right on it. Wow. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at that. He built the bunker and then manually upgraded mines on it and stopped a terror tech. In the meantime, we do see a very nice helix from Staz intercepting another technical. And there you go. If those technicals can't break through, it's going to be very difficult to stop these Chinese war machines as they pump out more and more units and they gain more and more map control. In the meantime, we see a hijacker here from Mr. Dark. Look at that. He's just trying to get the dozer. Uh, the dozer's kind of going for it. But I do suspect that Dark will eventually capture this guy because there's no stealth detection or anything like that. Let's see what's going on in the middle. We got a nice big push here from Blue. That is Mr. Pepsi himself. And let's see if he can do anything with this army. In the meantime, this Helix here. Still keeping this area secure. There were some quads here, though. So it looks like the GLAs are thinking of potentially pushing on this end. Battlemaster proving to be very annoying. And we do, in fact, see Dark with that dozer. So Dark, did he get a scaffold? He got one power scaffold and got another hijacker out right here. In the meantime, we see Excal moving in with a random Battlemaster here. And is he actually going to deny this? Yes, he does. Those things are pretty painful, guys. They are pretty painful. In the meantime, a big quad army ready, but there's only red here. There are no other tunnels by the looks of things, so red will have to fend off on his own. In the meantime, we see Staz taking out some of the quads here of orange. And we see an attack here from dark. So far, we're seeing a bit of a scattered GLA pushing from the GLA players. Like, we, we had yellow here, we have orange here, and then we have red here. But they're not coming together. They're not coming together to form a solid fist to give a nice punch to Team Excal. And that's not happening, but we might see that changing. See, some overlords now coming out for Mr. Excal. In the meantime, we have Dr. Goldfish and Pink here still pumping out a whole load of units, making things nice and difficult. Pepsi here with a good army composition, chewing away these squads. Now we see some units coming together here. We got red and we got orange. We gotta be careful. We'll find a dozer here. That's gonna be nice to take out. And let's see, we got a beacon here from Goldfish saying, shall I push here or shall we get rid of this? Excal does have a decent amount of units here. And Excal also on an insane amount of income there. My guess is because he has most of the oils. That also puts a lot of pressure on Excal because that means he needs to do a good job. He needs to take out a lot of things. Because he is taking a lot of his team's money. That being said, it's Excal, right? <laughs> it's Excal. <laughs> if someone's going to do a good job, you're, you're, it's not really that people go like, Excal, you better not mess it up. And there we go. Tactical Nuke Migs ready for Excal as well. So he's got an Overlord army. He's going to have Nuke Migs. In the meantime, we see Pepsi still over here. Still level one. He hasn't killed that much. But he hasn't lost much either because he's got a KD of 5.0. So he's been uh, just building up, getting more and more units. And that's going to be very helpful, almost like chess moves to kind of corner off sections to prevent the enemy from wanting to make an attack happen. And here we go. Oh, Dragon Tank's getting a little stuck. This is not what you want to do. Orange and red going to lose some quads here. In the meantime, we see the push down below. Excal on fire here. I saw a yellow Overlord. Yeah, Dark actually took an Overlord there. That's very nice. And down below, we see another push. We see Goldfish attacking. So all the GLAs here are just in complete disarray because you got an attack over here. You got an attack over here. You got an attack over here. And the GLAs have to choose what the hell do we do? And they seem to be splintering off. They are all trying to fight one guy at a time. That is probably not going to be the way to do this. Nice demo trap here. In the meantime, I see a random rebel. Okay. 
And I see some nuke mix dying here. So Excal has been damaging a lot and has taken out this whole section here. The goldfish has been taking out the section below. And oh man, that was a demo trap. That was a demo trap. See some demo bikes out as well. Very important to see those demo bikes. I'm also wondering if we're going to see some toxin buses. Because that will help a lot as well. In the meantime, we see Pepsi pushing now over here. And nuke mix are out and about. Stasno coming in. Oh, Staz, no, Staz, no. Oh man, that is a lot of le dead lixes there. Do all of them go down? No, almost all of them go down. That was very nice there, taking out those lixes. That is very painful because the lixes are basically the best thing that Staz has at this point in time. Let's see, this uh, got cleaned up by SPL, very nice. And in the meantime, we see Goldfish already with a new army, ready to push again. You can see at the top here, an army of Pepsi. Over here, an army of Pepsi. So Pepsi is uh, doing very well at sort of making sure the GLAs don't try and push. We do see this, though. This is very nice from Hummy, taking this section. But he is all alone here. There's just one tunnel. If this tunnel gets destroyed, if a push comes in, this other tunnel is already a bit further back. There's no one else around. So the GLAs, they do need to be careful with this. They do need to focus on... Uh, on helping each other out, having each other tunneled. Battle bus here has to be very careful because Excal does have nuke mix. And they are now... Are they flying to the top? No, they are not. See a nickname in the chat. Nickname, how you feeling, man? <laughs> oh, Brett saying that too. <laughs> uh. Nuke Mix proving to be... Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> that RPG just got launched into space. Nice placement for a, a palace here by Dark. Uh, Pepsi is mucking this up a little bit. You should not engage this. But a terrorist here as well. Does get killed. But Dark is trying to hold here. But at the same time, we have this big push. Back to Goldfish and Excal coming in with a massive tank army. We've got Nuke Mix at the ready as well. What can the GLAs do to stop this? We'll need to see some Scud launchers... Maybe some battle buses, but then the micro needs to be excellent to avoid all those very, very scary nuke mags. Let's see what's happening here. Arty Barrage coming in. Carpet Bomb coming in. Dark, still with his power plant. Probably going to lose it. Oh, wait. No, it's still alive. It just about survived. I'm sure Dark is happy about that. But look at this army. This is very hard for the GLAs to clear. We got some Tank General army here as well. It's just Battle Masters, but even this, very hard to kill. Yes, Demo Bikes could do the job, but you need good micro and you need a bit of luck. And luck is definitely on the side of SPL. Takes out a big chunk there. Only three Battle Masters remain. One of them gets sniped with a Jarman. Very nicely done. But still, this Overlord army, there is only... But there are only two ways. One is with battle buses, the other one is with scud launchers. Another way is maybe if all the Jarmans come together and snipe these overlords one by one. But Excal is one step ahead. He brought a troop crawler. So he can recapture those overlords if need be. Lix is now from Staz, ready to help out. And this unit combination of a powerful ground army, powerful air units, as well as nuke MiGs, it makes it so difficult. What can the GLAs do? Even if they have demo bikes, they simply cannot hold against something like this. Meanwhile, we still see Hummy over here collecting. He's very happy he's had this cash the whole time. We do see that the China players do have the middle now. It belongs to them. We have a nuke on the oil, by the sound of things, of Hummy. Is that where it hits? Yes, right on the oil. Also, three nuke silos out of Excal, man. Three nuke silos out of Excal. He's been having a very nice double-digit income per minute for a long time now. But he has been showing that he knows what to do with it. He's got the overlords out, the nuke migs. Staz ready to do another push, but there's no ground army, so it is going to be a bit risky. But Marakar calls it and surrenders. Dark Nine surrenders. And everybody surrenders. That is a very nice clean kill there for Team Excal. Very well played. Damn. <laughs> Damn, that was good, man. That was good.
Team Excal coming in with a victory. Look at the cash, man. What is what is this? Why does he have so much money collected? Uh, Excal getting all the oils. All his mates saying, yeah, go ahead. You take it. You take it. You take it, bunny. It's, uh, look at this. Dr. Goldfish and Pepsi. Like, barely having any cash to their name, though, right? It's just all going into the bank of Excal. And Excal's pumping out units as a result. Uh, very nicely played there. We saw some action with the demo bikes. Um, that was nice. But again, it's just the sheer power of these armies, you know? Excal was given the ability and the space to balloon because he had all those oils. And he delivered. He got Overlords out. He got Nuke Migs out. He got everything. And it's just so hard for the GLAs to do something about that. So, well played there to Team Excal. But let us see what the Team Marakar will do. Let's see if they can win it. It is very important for them to win this next match because so far it's always been the Chinas that have been kicking ass and taking names, right? Always the Chinas. So if they lose the next match, it could be a little painful, a little demotivational as it were. Anyway, let us jump into the next game. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Here we go. Ooh. So yes, here we go. This time we have Excal as the Toxin General up top. And next to him on the left, we have the Demolition General, that is Staz. And the front here, ready to take some of the punches, is gonna be a Pepsi as the Stealth General. And at the top, we have Dr. Goldfish, also as Stealth General. Dr. Goldfish loves being Stealth General. It's, it's his favorite army, like, by far. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. So we're gonna see, we're gonna expect great things from you, sir. Great things. Or else, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be unhappy. Just, just saying. We got Infantry General here for Hummy. We got Nuke General here for Marikar, the man himself. We have SPL as Tank General over here. And we have Dark Nine also as a Tank General. So, let's see the more factories going up. Because these guys at the front will have to put on a lot of pressure on the GLAs. To make sure they don't get that sweet, sweet map control. And the money that resides within the middle. Let's see what they're going to do here. We got a worker. All the workers flying all over the place. Goldfish sending a worker down here, but also up here. So it looks like he might want to be a bit aggressive, or perhaps he's just interested in the cash here and interested in maybe getting the oil for the cash here. Because if you have, let's say, this corner spot, you have an excellent spot from which you can send out attacks straight towards the China players. So let's see what's going to happen there. We've got a Lix that's going to go up here for Hummy. And, uh,. We actually see a bunker going up as well for Marikar. He's doing the exact same strat that Excal did in the previous match. Where he's just building a bunker for 400 bucks, then upgrades the mines for 600 bucks. And then, as a result, you kind of got this area protected. However, there's one big problem. Pepsi is very fast here. And damn, uh, look at the strats. That is some very quick thinking there from Mr. Marikar. And is that tech going to go down? Gets the crush. That hurts. That hurts, man. But technical does get destroyed. And the red guard has been saved. Nicely done, though. I love seeing these kind of strats. We see some combat bikes from Dr. Goldfish flying into the map. Here we go. What are these guys up to? Is this for scouting? Or is this with ulterior motives? Let's see, one goes up to try and deny the red guard. Another one here. But the oil's already been captured. So a little slow there from Dr. Goldfish with the combat bikes. Could have done something. But perhaps going traditional with technicals would have worked better. Excal trying to deny one truck. Doesn't quite manage. Over here, the truck survives as well. So far, the Chinas are holding. Yes, we still see a, a bike, but I'm not sure what damage this bike can do. It's just a little annoying. It's just they deal so little damage. Look at this. Uh, can we have the scoreboard, please? Yes, I can enable the scoreboard. There we go. Let's see, up top, we have a Lix out of Hummy. We've got a Dragon Tag. No, don't flame your own shit! Why are you flame your own shit, man? Don't, don't, don't. don't. Just don't. Ah, uh, very nice flame wall now. And that is going to be a destroyed tunnel network. And we saw a cancel here on the supply stash from Dr. Goldfish. So Dr. Goldfish knows that he cannot face this Tank General. Also, Tank General does have a bit of an army advantage against... The Stealth General, because Stealth General, what, what can they build, man? They, they get, what, quads? These guys eat up quads for breakfast, okay? It's just not gonna work out if you get quads. So you need to see something else, like maybe some Toxin Buses, question mark? That's a lot of tunnels. That makes me think we're gonna see some Toxin Buses. Palace is ready. 
And that's a lot of RPGs, and there come the buses. Very nice. Let's see, the GLAs are nicely dug in on this side, and we do actually see three different colored tunnel networks, and that is what was missing in the previous match. We did not see that sort of uh, determination of the GLA players to come together. Looks like Elix does get taken down here. The tank general that is dark does have a really nice army here. And there's some pressure right here, right now, on Dr. Goldfish. Let's see what's happening down below. We do see a toxin buzz dealing some good damage. Let's see, down below we see the cash being collected by SPL very happily. And that's quite early on, actually, that SPL has been uh, managing to take this section. So it doesn't look like there was too much resistance from Staz. In the meantime, we do have a push up top. Dark deciding to go for it. And we have a very nice battle bus dealing some more damage. And taking out some of those vetted battle masters. And that's going to be good XP. Excal already on level 3. He's literally leading with XP compared to all the players in this match. And if he has a couple of the good battle bosses like that, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happens. Rebel denies the oil cap. Very nice. And we see MIGs out. We see a nuke silo out, but no nuke MIG upgrade. I expect that any second. And that's going to change things, because that's going to make Marakar a very scary guy indeed. And actually, in this game, it's actually SPL who's ahead on income for Team Marakar. Very, sim uh, very different playstyle from the previous match, where we saw Excal basically going crazy on all the income. Going for another battle bus. Ooh, that is a dead MIG. That is going to hurt. It looks like the GLAs are bunkering in a little bit. Very careful with their attacks. They're getting their quads out, but they're worried about exactly this, man. Look at that. That's the shit that they are all terrified of. That's why you don't want to go too far from your tunnel network, you know? It's uh, just saying. Meantime, we've got a very annoying dragon tank here from uh, Dark Nine. He's doing a good job. We have an attempt of a push. At the top of the map. But here's the thing. Because those nuke migs are out, it's going to be very dangerous for Goldfish. Quad cannons deal very little anti-air damage. They deal anti-air damage, but it's very little. When a quad has veterancy, that's when they deal a lot of anti-air damage. But until then, not so much. Even if they have AP bullets, it helps. But it's still kind of a shitty anti-air unit. So those migs from Marakar over here, can deal so much damage and will pay for themselves like three times over. Another bus over here dealing damage. Look at all the tanks it keeps destroying. Excal level four somehow. Just take it out. So much stuff and the pressure is mounting. The China players, they gotta be careful. They do have this corner supply. They do have this corner supply, but the GLAs are refusing to die. And Excal getting level 4. Once he reaches level 5, he could sneak attack. And that could really mess things up for the China players. You see, the middle is trying to be taken here by Dark on this side. Over here, we see Marakar now finishing construction of a supply. So, so far, the Chinas have the middle. And that's what they need if they want to get a victory. They need to have more income, more cash to spend. And again, another bus here from Mr. Excal. Taking out more units. The guy's, like, his XP is insane. All the other players are level 2. How is he level 4? Man, Excal just being ruthless here. Definitely feeling it. He's on top of his game tonight. Or at least, you know, Friday night when they played this game. <laughs> uh, random mobs falling from the sky. In the meantime, we see that SPL is slowly but surely... Coming closer and closer to the GLA bases. Nice capture here on the artillery platform with the Lotus. It's really going to be annoying here. The only thing that could really mess up the Chinas at this point is if we see mass Scudstorm spam from the GLAs. Let's see, we got one, two. That is not enough Scudstorms. Oh, three. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. The Scudstorms can deal insane amounts of damage. So there is a chance that the GLAs can still do it. Again, the bus micro, man. The amount of kills these buses have done. It's insane. Got a beacon here of a random battle master that snuck into the base. And we see the China's reaching level 3. 
So the problem with the Chinas reaching level 3 is that they get general powers. And look how many chi uh, Chinas there are. That's a lot of artillery barrages you will have to endure. So, you know, there's that to worry about as the GLAs. We've got an Anthrax Bomb, Excal's level 5. How is this man level 5 already? That's just crazy, man. Pepsi's still level 1. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Let's see. Very nice, quick reaction there from Dark Nine. Wait, how come these are uh, Nuke General overlords? Did he capture these? Must have been Jarmans who sniped it, and then Dark who captured it. Again, MiGs coming in, dealing good damage. No Nuke MiGs, but with four MiGs, yeah, you can deal uh, quite a bit of damage there. In the meantime, we saw a bike over here got denied, and here we go. Sneak attack, ladies and gentlemen, this is where it starts. There are a bunch of Nuke MiGs circling. If we see a pop, that would be the biggest Fargo pop ever. Excal, choosing not to engage. Very wise decision. If he popped, he would have lost everything. But if there were no nuke mix, he could have done some serious damage. And sneak attack is ready very quickly. Like, it's only like a two-minute countdown or two-and-a-half-minute countdown. And then he can send another one. So we might still see a counterattack from Excal. Battle bus is getting eradicated by the nuke mix. We can see SPL here. He's got this whole left bottom corner. He's having a great time, man. He's even got a dozer here. He's taking this money. He's enjoying life right about now. Until Excal shows up with a battle bus, right? <laughs> Everybody gangsta until Excal shows up with a battle bus. But SPL is uh, managing. He's got an ECM, which helps a lot. And uh, saw a nice uh, terrorist there. See some mobs out. Out of Mr. Pepsi. Big army of units here. Dark Knight with the tank general and some overlords. Got a camo netted Scudstorm. Very nice, very important. We're not seeing that many Scudstorms, though. There are more nuke silos out than there are Scudstorms. And, well, Scudstorms are just so powerful. They're the only real thing that the GLAs can do to destroy the Chinas. Because these armies, man, it's constant, like... You're constantly trying to clean up these armies. You can't really get to attack in the China base. But with Scudstorms, you can sit back in your base and just launch at wherever you want to fire. Wait, where's that going? Is that going here? It is going here. Oh. Very tactical strike there from Marikar. Doing it over here. The radiation is actually very potent from a nuke silo. Look at the damage here on that quad cannon. Almost going low health for uh, going into this radiation pool for a little bit. Got neutral shells for the players. And right now, things are not looking great for Team Excal. Team Marakar has the map control. They're not being pushed out of the territories in the middle. Rebel Ambush, that failed. Not great here. We have green pushing over here, yellow pushing over here. And then there's also Nuke Mix to worry about. Nuke Mix that belong to Marakar can instantly wipe out an army of any of the GLA players. There's no way to stop that. See a bomb truck here from Dr. Goldfish. <laughs> Dark was paying attention though. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing a sneak attack and a dozer got stolen by Excal. But do we see a pop? Is something coming out or is Excal too worried about the nuke mix? We see two buses coming out. Any reaction? We see neutron shell nuke cannon here from Hummy. Ready to fire. It deploys. We got Nuke Mix coming on the side. And there we go. Absolutely obliterated here. That is what happens, man. That is what happens. You can have a tunnel. It doesn't matter. These suckers have Nuke Mix, Nuke Cannons, and Napalm Mix. You're not going to break through. You're just not going to break through. Scud Storms are the only way to do it. And we actually have a Scud Storm firing away. Uh, where's it going? Oh, it's going over here. Let's see where it's firing. I think on the airfield or perhaps on the internet center. Let's look where this sucker is landing and hits. Whoa. Okay. Hits the uh, airfield with all the MiGs and the internet center. Absolutely perfect strike. The amount of damage done by this one Scud Storm is more than $10,000. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the power of the Scud Storms. We needed to see more of these. But at the same time, guys, try and survive against this. And then also budget your money to build a couple Scud Storms. It, it's not exactly easy, is it? Nuke Mix, look at <laughs> Look at this. I mean, it's just memes at this point, right? <laughs> One Nuke Mix just kills everything. Everything. 
Uh, you know, I feel bad for the GLAs. In this tournament, not once has the GLA side won this match. It's always been the Chinas and... Oh. Oh, hello. Where's this going? They're actually firing. And they are... Yeah, they all fired. All the missiles fired. And they're going where? Where is it going? Let's see. On to the airfield. Uh, we don't see Anthrax Beta, which is a real shame here. Yeah, just the airfield. Well, still something. We have another Scud ready to fire. And this is the best that the GLAs can do. And uh, let's see, which direction is this going? I want to find the missiles. They, they vanished. I can't, I can't see the missiles. I can't see the missiles. Where, where, where are the missiles? Oh, over here. Okay, on the right. On the right. Get some oil. And, oh, very nice from uh, Excal there. Taking out a nuke with a battle bus in combination with the Scudstorm does take it out. Very nice. In the meantime, we had a nuke firing away, killing another oil. So the China players know what's up. They know what's up. They're like, hey, man, we just go after your income. It's over because we rich. We have middle. And you don't have middle. So if we take out your income, you screw. And they're absolutely correct on that. There's still uh, an oil here. Not that much. Uh, not that much remaining here in terms of oil for the GLAs. Anthrax bomb on the left. Excal now trying to come in with a big push. And Excal does have cash bounty. So, hey, even though they don't have income, they make money by killing the enemy. And look, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. What is this? <laughs> look at this. It still survived, too. <laughs> oh, man. We can see uh, Team Marakar muscling their way to a victory here. The base of the GLA players is shrinking. Not much remaining here. We've got many different colors. You know, we got cyan, we got purple. But, you know, all the bases are shrinking. There's there's not that much left anymore. We see uh, terrorists being created. And a Scud Storm's gonna be taken out with an artillery barrage and a nuke. And there we go. Carpet Bomb in the meantime also coming in, cutting off some of that production. Look at this, one Carpet Bomb finished, another Carpet Bomb gets placed down. It is absolutely insane how powerful these China armies become once all these China players have Carpet Bomb. It's just insane, right? It's insane. It's just... If you have four players, like, what's the cooldown of Carpet Bomb? Is that three minutes? You can literally send a Carpet Bomber every, what, 45 seconds on, the, like, on a certain location. It's crazy. It's just crazy. And here we go. Literally a repeat of what happened 30 seconds ago, right? It's just this time the arms dealer gets destroyed as well. And all these nuke migs circling, having a good time. Basically looking for any, like, sneaky armies. Oh, that is very nice. Excal capturing the Overlord. That got sniped. We have the nuke mix. We just fire at it. Oh, lol. <laughs> he just, he just unmanned it. Uh, and there we go. Problem solved. Guys, if you ever have any problems in life, I know the solution. It's called nuke mix. It's, <laughs> it's it just works, okay? It just works. Uh, poor GLAs, man. The EMP here, also very nice to make sure the timer gets stopped. So like that, this guy can't fire, and there's enough time for the general powers to come in. And there's a carpet bomber. Of course there's a carpet bomber. What did the GLA still have, man? What did they still have? So far, they're all still playing, somehow. Right? Nobody died. Yeah, nobody nobody quit out. Team Excal is relentless. We have uh, one supply here from Dr. Goldfish. Let's see. Uh, no income for Pepsi. No income for Staz. They're literally out of money. They have a command center, so that's the only way that... The only way Staz can contribute is with his Rebel Ambush. He's got no income. And Pepsi... What does Pepsi actually still have? He's got a command center as well. So that's literally all they can do. Just spawn Rebel Ambushes. That's it. In the meantime, these guys are all level 5 apart from Hummer, who's level 4. So all the general powers alone at this point is basically going to cause the GG. But we still see Marikar pumping out units. In the meantime, on the left side, we got SPL still pumping out units. And I mean, how can you deal with this as a GLA? The only thing I can think of is Scud launches, man. Nickname says, thank you, Leggy. Let me use a nuke mig to cure my hangover. I'll be honest, if you use a nuke mig to cure your hangover, you will no longer be hang hungover. I think, I think we can agree on that. Attack on the left side and attack on the right. Very nice of Team Marakar to put the pressure in two places at once, making it very hard for the GLA to defend. They have to choose. Do they stop this army? Do they stop this army? And then again, what do they have to stop these armies? 
see bomb trucks here from Dr. Goldfish. Another Scud Storm destroyed, and right now we only have nuke silos remaining. Oh man. Sneak attack down a left. Attempting to destroy the oil, probably. And Excal says screw it and surrenders. And Pepsi says screw it and surrenders. And Stad says screw it and surrenders. So far, Dr. Goldfish, all of them quit, right? All the guys quit, and there's not even a big float here for Goldfish. He's not floating 20k or something. Which is usually what happens when players quit out. It's just like, there was no money for Stas, there was no money for Pepsi. And now we just have Goldfish on his own. Goldfish against the world. Let's see if he can do it. We even see hackers out from the China players. Ah, oh, man. Oils have been destroyed, though, so that is, uh... This one's still alive. What about over here? This one's been destroyed. So the G-Lays did do a good job at trying to destroy the oils, but there's still that middle. Oh, never mind, it's mined out. Hmm. Could Dr. Goldfish actually do it? Could he pull it off? He's got 4.7k, he's getting his uh, tunnel network neutral shelled. We have no money, no income for Dark, actually. Zero. SPL is also dropping here. Hey. Wait a minute, is it possible for Goldfish to pull ahead? He's got a Jarman here, he should definitely use it. Uh... Okay. Also, I just noticed. Are the players still playing? <laughs> I'm not seeing any movement. I think that's the end of the replay. So I think the game just finished. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Like, even the nukes aren't being fired. So I, I think I think that's what happened. So uh, the replay finished and the game just bugged out. So yes, that is a clear victory there for Team Marakar, who uh, definitely, definitely played well and also really needed that win. They really, really needed it. My god. Also, I have to say, very nice of Marakar here. In the beginning, trying to keep his red guard alive. This is all the GLAs could do. Come in with the early aggression, the early harassment to try and make sure that the Chinas did not get all the oils, did not get all the money. Because otherwise, this kind of shit happens. The nuke makes just reigned supreme. And Marakar played this very well. And so did the rest of his team. And, uh... Hey, we just got a subscription on Twitch, bum chat. Thank you very much. Uh, look at the damage, man. I have to say, these China games are... When there's a lot of Chinas, things always go crazy. Look at this, things always go crazy. I absolutely love it. That being said, Excal definitely still the man of the match here with 147 kills in this match, uh, followed by Markar, 127. Definitely catapulting his team to victory there. So, uh, yeah, let's jump in to the next match, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Who do you think is actually going to win it? Also, if you know who wins it, don't freaking spoil it or we will time you out, okay? We'll, we'll time you out. There's this, that, there's that. Because, you know, uh, the games were already played, but this is a replay cast. So, yeah, no, okay? So, no spoiling, because we'll get very, very mad indeed. Okay, let's now hop into the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Score is a 1-1. One, one. And let's see what's gonna happen here. We have a... Uh, ooh, is that normal China? It is a normal China. And the casting score isn't showing. I don't know why, it keeps disabling itself, but it happens, it happens. We have Excal as the purple player in the bottom left here as normal China. Next to him is his mate, Mr. Staz, as a demo. And on the right-hand side, we see Pepsi as Air Force. Oh, man. Air Force for Pepsi. And last but not least, we have Dr. Goldfish as the infantry general. Guys, it's going to be top versus bottom, okay? So the bottom is Team Excal. The top, we have Hummy as Toxin General, nice army to have. Uh, we have Orange here as normal GLA for Marakar. We have Green, that is SPL, as normal China. And then we see Dark Nine as a normal GLA. So again, we have a, a good amount of GLAs here for Team Marakar and one China. So SPL is most likely going to go MIGS here. He wants to have something to help out his teammates. And I'm not sure if... Are we going to see an airfield? I'm curious. I want to keep my eye on SPL here because the GLAs, they can be very good with a bit of air support. So let's see what happens here. We have uh, quite some aggressive tunnels here from Staz. Staz wants to be nice and scary. The nice worker here of Dark. Very important. Wants to keep that map control. In the meantime, we still see an Air Force here. Uh, we see a War Factory and a Humvee. Okay, so the Air Force Pepsi is choosing not to go for Raptors, choosing not to go for Comanche. He's going for Humvees here, which could also work because there are a lot of GLAs and- Oh, no, 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 Goldfish! Ah, oh, Goldfish, man. 
Why, man? Was that your last dozer? He still has one dozer here, and it's under threat. Goldfish, man, you gotta be careful. In the meantime, we see technical here, and... Ooh. Deals some good damage. Sneaks through. Oh, no, goldfish. Your last dozer, man. We gotta make sure... We gotta keep an eye on that dozer. In the meantime, we see this technical uh, being very annoying here. The very, very annoying technical. Markar, why you do this? Why you do this? Why you annoy these guys, huh? Finding another dozer. Do you have anything in here? Yeah, you do. He's gonna try and deny the oil capture, which is uh, very nice to do. Oh, he's building- he's dropping a worker. Damn. Alright, that's a very interesting strat. In the meantime, the pressure on Goldfish continues. His dozer is exposed- No! Goldfish! Why? Why you do this? Why you do this? Come on, man! You knew you were gonna be under threat there. Ah, oh, and is this supply gonna go down? Goldfish, although he's those hunted, can still participate in this game. He's got a barracks, he's got a war factory, but he does need to keep this supply that is kind of like low health there. But his teammates can repair it, so it's, it's not the worst. In the meantime, I would have liked to see some like combat Chinooks or something out of Pepsi. I do think that would be really cool to do. See a Lix here, and the Lix cleaned up. The expansion of Marakar, very important as well. So very nice from Excal there, as uh, China. He's going heavy on the Lixes, man. He's going very, very heavy on the Lixes. In the meantime, we see is this a Terra Tech? And I don't know. No, I think it's just an empty technical. A bit of a risky push here from Excal, because he didn't have a bunker Lix ready here. But it's working out. It's working out. In the meantime, let's see. I mean, this is crying to have, like, a combat Chinook made, you know? I mean, you guys know co combat Chinooks are the best, right? They're, they're really fun. But then again, if you already have Helixes, do you want combat Chinook? I don't know. I would say yes. If you have the opportunity for combat Chinook, go combat Chinook. <laughs> oh, the supply has been destroyed. Goldfish in a world of trouble. He's only got one supply and one barracks. He doesn't even have a war factory, so Goldfish is effectively taken out. Helix, does it survive? Yes, get, no, gets taken out there by Markar. Very nice. Only one Helix remains, and the MiGs are landing! No, MiGs, no! Oh, man! The MiGs! Oh, man! He fires one missile and lands again! Why do you do this? Uh, SPL. Messed that up a little bit. He needed to keep those MiGs alive. Losing an airfield hurts, but losing an airfield and two MiGs hurts a lot more. See, we got a beacon here from Goldfish saying, Guys, you can take my supplies. I'm not going to take them anymore because, well, I can't. And let's see what's happening in the bases here. Do we see any palaces, actually? I haven't noticed. Yeah, finally we see a palace going up. Uh, command center going up for SBL. He knows what happened to Goldfish. He's like, that shit ain't going to happen to me. In the meantime, we still see the Lix is in the back. Gets destroyed. Very nice teamwork here from Hummy and SPL. Lots of Humvees out from the Air Force. That is Pepsi. And once Pepsi gets a lot of general points, that's when he starts to really become scary as an Air Force as well. Pepsi now with the Strat Center ready. Where is that sucker? Oh, thank you. Yes, there it is. And he can now call in a Carpet Bomber. He still has his general point that he needs to spend. And that will be for the Carpet Bomber. And then he can call that sucker in very frequently, like 2 minutes 30 seconds. It's just crazy how good the Carpet Bomber is. Excal ready with another amount of Lixes, and woo, that was some very nice micro there from Mr. Dark. Popping, but keeping his quads alive. Lixes now moving to the left. In the meantime, we have a push on the right side as well from Pepsi, putting extra pressure on Team Marakar. Oh, man. There's a tunnel back here. We might see a pop. Yeah, we do. And that is... Uh, Lix is still alive. In the meantime, Pepsi, not entirely sure about pushing here on Hummy. And the oil's getting destroyed here. Excellent target. Lots of gats coming in. These Lixes are absolutely cornered. Excal, you're gonna lose these uh, Lixes. And that is... One Lix going down. Second Lix, that is a Speaker Tower Lix almost going down. And the MiGs are now coming in, hitting the wrong target. No, SPL! No! Not again! Not again, man. Uh, poor SPL. Losing uh, all those MiGs and airfield. Quads managing to take out some of the Humvees here. 
These elixirs of Excal are just proving to be very effective. SPL could have had his MIGs up and uh, struck the Lixes. If you have four MIGs hitting the Lixes at the exact same time, then uh, you can insta-kill a Lix. So that would have been uh, important there, but Excal keeps hitting those airfields. So Mr. SPL is just always low on MIGs. And finally these Lix is going down. My god, man. Excal in the meantime is just getting more Lixes. He's like, hey, it's been working out so far. It puts a lot of pressure on Team Marakar, allowing the teammates of Excal to push. So it's a nice strat here. Goldfish contributing the only way he can, sending in tank hunters, but these are, these are still vetted tank hunters, so they deal a lot of damage. Marakar, a lot of quads. Let's see. RT is going to be on another airfield, so Excal again, paying attention. And that is another airfield gone. Oh, man. What about these MiGs? No! <laughs> Saves them just in time. Oh, my God. And again, Excal with the Lexus. Proving to be ruthless. This man. At this point, just get chain guns, man. <laughs> Excal is pumping out Lexus. We could just also see some Stinger sights going up because they're not that expensive. We do actually see a Stinger sight. They will make the Lexus think twice about engaging. In the meantime, Pepsi slowly but surely clearing the army of Hummy here and clearing the base. We have some uh, help here from Goldfish. Now we see Jarman Kel. On the scene here from Marakar. And that's going to help out with XP. And also cash bounty. Now this army can actually start to feed Marakar some good money. So German Kel can engage this. He should not waste the quads though. And here we go. Carpet Bomber moving in from the Air Force. Going where? Onto the War Factory. And the, the supply back there. MiG's doing a good job taking out the Humvees. And the supply just about survives there. Just about survives. In the meantime, we have another push with more Lixes. Guys, Excal is going full Pablo. You need to find a way to stop the Lixes. Excal's doing the exact same strat over and over, and to his surprise, it's working phenomenally well. Look how much damage Excal's done. Can we see his units destroyed? Can, can we see that? He's got 49 units destroyed. Oh, this is what we need, yes! This is what we need, Mr. SPL. This is what we need. Now imagine he had two airfields of four mix. He could have wiped out those Lixes so easily. This is what we needed to see way sooner. The amount of damage Excal's done with these Lix attacks. It's really, really catapulted Team Excal forward. To the point where Pepsi's just chilling, man. He's just sending Humvees. He's Air Force. He don't care. He's sending Humvees. And he's having results. Because Team Marakar is just having such a hard time finding themselves in this match. Because every time they do something, a whole load of Lixes come in again. Carpet Bomb coming in. Gonna deal some nice damage here. But yes, SPL. Let's see some more of that. Let's see some of that MiG micro, and this is probably why xcal has been focusing on these airfields, because he knows these MiGs can do an insane amount of damage. They actually are napalm MiGs with veterancy, guys. That's how powerful these suckers can be. See, Stealth Comanche has now been upgraded for Mr. Pepsi. We might see some Stealth Comanche, but we actually still have Helixes out, so... Oh, man. Pepsi doing a good job. Keeping on the pressure here. Markar now has to help out with Hummy. We still see just random infantry troops coming out of Dr. Goldfish. Does he even have any money? He's literally got no income permitted. He still has 700 bucks to his name. He's got nothing. To his credit, he's level 3 though. I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. Uh. Pepsi continuing with the push. Marakar, 3.6k per minute. Pepsi, 11k per minute. Excal, 7.6k per minute. Staz, 9.2k per minute. The whole middle belongs to Team Excal. The longer this goes on, 
more likely Team Marikar will get defeated here in this match. And I like this from Pepsi. He's just pumping out Tovies. It's uh, clearly, you can see he knows how to use Tovies. That was a nice mix strike, by the way. He knows that he's good with this, so he keeps doing just that. He is Air Force, but he's like, you know what? Let me say, screw it to the Air Force units. I can be better with Tovies. Let me just utilize my skills here and focus on having Tovies and dealing damage with that as opposed to getting King Raptors and maybe mucking up the micro and things like that. So that is, uh, that is good. Recognizing one skill, like knowing what you're good at, knowing what you're not good at, makes a difference. And I'm sorry, am I seeing this right? Is this a Dr. Goldfish Humvee? Yes, it is. It's, it's a Dr. Goldfish Humvee. He captured a Humvee that must have been sniped by a Jarman. And he's got like a few infantry in it. He's got 400 bucks. He can buy the repair drone once. <laughs> We finally see an artillery barrage going on the oil's bottom right here and takes out both. Nice hit there by Mr. SPL. In the meantime, we have a big quad push on the left. Stars kicking ass, taking names. Dark Nine in the world of trouble. He doesn't have much to defend here. He's gonna need to request some backup. But I think Markar is already kind of busy on this side. Air Force now back in a punch with the general powers. Slowly but surely, Team Markar is losing grip on this match. There's not much they can still do here. Dark is basically wiped here. He's got nothing left. On the right, we still see Hummy sort of recovering. Dark quits out. And it's only because Marakar was helping Hummy. But Team Marakar, they know it. And they surrender. Very nicely played there by Team Excal. Getting themselves a pretty smooth victory there. Damn. Like, that was uh, that was pretty, pretty intense. I have to say... Uh, I wasn't sure where things were going to go, especially with the armies. I thought, oh, we're going to see a lot of MiGs, a lot of air support. But Goldfish getting hunted, you know, I was like, oh, man, this is not looking good. Like, it, like Goldfish did mess it up a little bit there. He was a little too casual with his dozers, which is fine. It can happen, you know. There's a lot of stuff to keep in mind in a 4v4. But it did actually create an opportunity for Team Marakar. But it was Excal, man. Excal, who killed airfield after airfield with these Lixes. Non-stop. He kept on going. The amount of damage he dealt. Constantly denying the MiG production of Mr. SPL. Because he knew if SPL got his MiGs up. And if SPL had at least four MiGs. He could do some crazy shit. Like what I'm about to show you. Check this out. Look at all these Lixes. Getting wrecked and obliterated by the MiGs. And this is what Excal was afraid of. So Excal did a good job. Denying SPL those airfields, but uh, SPL should have been a little more aware that Excal was probably going to do that, and other players were probably going to go and try and deny those airfields. If there were more airfields out of SPL, if there were more MiGs out of SPL, the game would have gone different. I do think so. I do think so. Mind you, I'm not saying this like, oh, bad SPL. I don't mean it like that. Guys, 4v4 is crazy intense. Crazy intense. Um, we could have seen more support from the teammates as well. Uh, but I think it's just Excal who saw the opportunity more than anything else and totally capitalized on it. So it's more Excal who did a good job rather than, oh, Team Marikar, this, that, and the other. I think I think that's what it comes down to. But uh, yeah, very well played there. And Team Excal gets a victory for it. So uh, let us jump into the next match. Match number four. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? We're going to see the reverse. Let's see how it's going to go down. And I'll have to enable the score again, right? Because it keeps disabling itself. <laughs> uh, let's see. Does it disable itself again? I think it did, right? Yeah, it did. Uh, it's okay. Leggy fix it for you guys. Leggy fix it. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's do the reverse. We got over here Staz as the normal GLA this time. And he's next to his mate, Excal, who's definitely going to go crazy on the mix. Let's be honest. We, we all know it, right, guys? I mean, we know it, right? Right? Yeah, I think, I think we know. He's going to go crazy on the mix. He's normal China, so it's kinda, it kind of makes sense. To the right is the blue player, that is Pepsi, as normal GLA. And next to him, we have the pink player, that is Dr. Goldfish, as Toxin General. So let's see what they will do against Team Marikar, consisting of Hummy over here as the Infantry General. Down below, we have the Air Force for Mr. Marikar himself. Oh, damn. Do not want to face an Air Force that is Marikar. He's very scary. And we have SPL here as Normal China. And on the left, we have Dark Nine as the Demolition General. Let's see how this match is going to play out. I want to keep an eye on Excal, man. I'm just waiting for it. I expect MiGs, not Lixes. MiGs. But let's see. 
Let's see what they will do, right? Nice here from Hummy, trying to get a bit of map control and trying to get this cash. Always a good move. We see uh, quite a bit of aggression here from the GLAs on the right side of the map. Trying to get that middle, trying to secure it. They're like, hey man, we need that cash. Got a technical over here. Dragon tank ready to move in as well from Excal. No airfields though. We do see a lot of barracks. The reason uh, we see so many barracks is because he's probably sending Red Guard everywhere to try and capture all the oils, like what we saw in the previous matches. So that is uh, very nice to do. Oh, boys! Oh, boys! Oh, boys! Now that's a terror attack. Very nicely done by Mr. Staz. In the meantime, we see Stealth Comanche. Oh, man! Pepsi, with a tech RPG, instantly taken out a Comanche. If you keep the Comanche numbers low, Air Force is not that powerful. But that's the thing, you gotta keep those Comanche numbers low. And we have a technical here from Goldfish, again with RPGs. RPGs are very good, but they can be stopped with the Shinnoks. So the Shinnoks have the point defense laser, as we're about to see. Check it out. He's using it. Ah, they're saying screw it. Okay, never mind. He's, he's saying screw it. He wants to take out these guys. And this one I'm talking about, this is what you need to see with Stealth Comanche. Look at that. Stopping the missiles. And just like that, you can easily and in a clean way take out all those RPGs. Nicely done by Marakar. We see how many Stealth Comanche do we have. Looks like we just have two for now. In the meantime, we have a Gat Tank on the left-hand side here. Quick thinking here from Dark, builds a demo trap and gets beaconed by Hexcal. He saw it. He saw it, man. We have Migs out from SPL. Hmm. Not sure if Migs is the right move here. The Gat Tank has snuck in from Hexcal, so Hexcal is going to have a good time taking out this Mig. There we go. And that's a 1,200 bucks unit. That is uh, expensive stuff. Oil getting destroyed here. Does it go down? That's a Markar oil. Yes, it goes down. In the meantime, we see the Stealth Comanche flying across the map, taking out whatever they can. Supply trucks, dozers, MiGs that are landed on airfields. Very nice, very good thinking from Mr. Marakar. And this is why these Stealth Comanche are so difficult to deal with. They are stealth. They can't just fly away. And the more Marakar gets of them and the more veterancy they get as well, the more difficult they become to kill and the more damage they deal as well. That being said, though, Excal's taking a different approach. He's actually going ground army here and having an absolutely amazing dragon tank flame wall here, taking out a lot of the workers, almost destroying the arms dealer as well. If he had one more second, that sucker would have gone down. See, we have the red player, Mr. Hummy, with his attack outpost, and so far, Team Marakar is absolutely dominating this game. Seen the napalm migs. Proving to be effective against the outposts, but they're hard to use on Stealth Comanche. Stealth Comanche just, you know, fly away and go stealth. And the MiGs can't hit them anymore. That's the thing. Dr. Gofish losing a supply here, and Marakar is going to get a lot of XP from these things. He's only level 1 for now. He's killing a lot of targets that don't give XP. If you kill an oil, you don't get XP. You kill a red guard, I don't think you get XP. You, get, you kill a worker or a dozer, you don't get XP. But they are crucial things in this game. Taking out, taking out this income is so important. We see rocket pods. Uh, no rocket pods yet for Mr. Marakar. In the meantime, we do see a very dangerous tunnel here from Staz. Ready to do a push onto the demolition general. That is Dark Nine. And this is going to be hard to deal with. Comanche need to come in, and they do. One veterancy here. Is he going to fly in the back and take this out? Excal should know that this is coming. Excal should send his MiG straight down. He's uh, got his MiGs on the airfield there. But he should know that Comanche will come to clean this up. And when Comanche are firing, yes, MiGs can hit these suckers. And they actually deal very good damage against Comanche as well. Nice rocket pod. Look at this. Gorgeous. And the MiGs coming in a little too late there because Comanche have gone and stealthed themselves, just like that. Actually, are we going to see a dogfight? I think we're seeing a dogfight. Look at them. Look at them go a little weird and funky here. Okay, <laughs> trap. <laughs> nice. And Excal almost losing his Comanche. And look at this. We've got a beacon here from Staz saying, what the hell, man? How can I stop this? Somebody killed his freaking Comanche. 
And we can see Marakar single-handedly dealing so much damage to Team Excal. Question is, can they come back from this? Sending in a Chinook just to soak up some damage. You might say, oh, what a wasted unit. It's only 950 bucks. But it's keeping the Comanche safe. The Comanche, one Comanche is worth more money, guys. So it's actually very nice uh, shielding. And here we go. Spectre coming in for the level 3 Marakar. Choosing to go for the oil. Will he actually get this? There are quite a few stingers here. And these stingers were constructed to deal with Comanche. But the oils do go down. Just about as the Spectre gets taken out. Very important hit again. Marakar reigning supreme with these suckers. Striking fear into the heart of Team Excal. See Pepsi here, very good job trying to get a lot of stingers, tunnels, and a lot of quads. Making it very difficult for the Comanche to engage in this section. So Marker will have to do something else. He will have to literally find every other place that he can go to and deal damage there. That's exactly what he's got in mind. Look at the defenses here. Stingers going up, gat tanks everywhere. These guys, Team Excal has to invest in so much anti-air just to stay alive. If you add up how much money they spend on anti-air and were to translate that into, I don't know, Scud Storms, they'd have like five Scud Storms or something, right? It's crazy how much defense you need to build to protect yourself against Comanche. So even if the Comanche don't deal damage, you're forcing your enemy to constantly build things they don't actually need. It's like they need the anti-air to not die to this. So even if this never gets used, they still got to spend that cash. And that alone, again, gives a boost, an advantage, to Team Marakar. Migs of Excal gonna be very good here against the outpost. The only chance Team Excal has is if they somehow manage to secure the middle and keep it secure. Right now we got Pepsi here with two supplies. All the oils everywhere have been destroyed. So it's only a couple of supplies here. That's it. Random technical actually uh, snuck in there from dark. You see, we still have two oils here. Still have two oils here. And we still have two oils here. So this is actually going to be a prime target here. I expect to see um, the next Spectre striking there. Look how much chaos is going on, guys. <laughs> oh, lovely to see, right? This is what you can get in a 4v4 finals. This is what you can get in a 4v4 finals. Combination of all the armies, all the units, all the strats. So good, right? And the fear, man. The fear of Team Excal. He's got chain gun. He's not fucking around. We don't see... Uh... Oh, boys! Oh! Oh, man. That actually didn't go as badly as I thought it would go. Stas actually didn't do that badly there with that pop. I thought he was going to lose everything. Got some MIGs here from SPL. SPL not entirely sure what to do with the, with the MIGs either. And here we go. Here we see that Spectre, in fact, going for the oils top left. Gonna take it out because it's such a crucial target. And if this gets taken out, do we see a quad pop helping out here? We have some GAT tanks. And GAT tanks are very good anti-air units, but we do see the oils going down. This is a crucial moment right here, guys. Right here. Excal's income per minute is gonna drop by 2k. Just like that. That's going to be very painful for him. In the meantime, we see more Comanche here. One Comanche actually died. But look at the veterancy as well. Level 5, Marakar just spent his general points. Where's his command center anyway? Over here. So his general powers will enter the map from here. We do, in fact, immediately see, uh, see a fuel air. Let's see where that's flying off to. Onto an airfield is an artillery barrage. As well as the fuel air, we see a carpet bomber going on the other airfield. And this is the thing, Excal is helping out a lot with those airfields. They want to get rid of them. If Excal cannot give any air support to the GLAs... Yeah, a bit of a miscommunication here. Might get the radar van, maybe. No. And A-10 kills another airfield. So Excal just lost one, two, three airfields within the span of 15 seconds. That means that these MiGs can be used only once, but then they cannot land until... These airfields are rebuilt. Excal getting on it right away. Middle has been uh, taken over by Team Marakar. And we are not seeing super weapons out of the GLAs. Again, just like what we saw in the second match of this series. Um, super weapons could actually be very potent here. 
because it is just hard for Team Excal to actually leave their base and attack. And in this case, it's not Nuke Mix that are the scary ones. It is the Stealth Comanche with the ama amazing amount of damage that they can deal. See some Raptors out as well. And we see a Particle Cannon going up for Markar. So Markar's having a great time, man. He's having a great time. He's really feeling it. He's really enjoying it. He's got a KD of 2.9 this far <laughs> into the game. <laughs> That's just crazy, guys. 2.9. That means he's killed 2.9 units before he's lost one unit himself. Like, I mean, damn. Another carpet bomb. This time it had MiGs on the airfield and gets taken out. Excal immediately placing down that airfield. You can see the frustration setting in for Excal here. Another oil destroyed. Excal's income is going lower and lower. We have a capture of the building here from Hummy. He actually managed to use his Lotus to uh, capture the ar arms dealer. He sold it off right away, so he gets 1,250 bucks for uh, that little attack there. Another airfield going up. Pressure is mounting on Team Excal. They gotta do something. The longer this goes on, the more likely Team Marikar will win it. But I don't think they have any strats. They have nothing that they can throw at Team Marikar. Because they're constantly on the back foot trying to defend. Having to deal with incoming attacks, having to deal with general powers, having to deal with airstrikes. Oh, man. Still have some MIGs out from Hummy as well. So Hummy has MIGs. Doesn't SPL also have MIGs? Uh, yeah, SPL has MIGs. Hummy has MIGs. Lots of air units, right? Lots of air units. Okay, these MIGs didn't make it. Spectre gunship hitting a black market. Always a good target. And good from Mr. Staz. Keeping that hole alive with one HP, man. <laughs> so that's going to rebuild. It's going to take a while. But he hasn't lost the building. Not fully. That's important as well. All these MiGs of Excal sitting here. They're an insurance policy. They cannot be used. They cannot be used offensively, at least. They have to be used defensively. It looks like Markar is plotting another attack on the left-hand side. Sending his Comanche to the left. Raptor's now targeting what? No, not yet. It's probably going to be tunnels that are going to be struck with the Raptors because Raptors are very good at killing tunnels. Artillery Barrage moves in. Gonna clear this section. There was an arms dealer here as well, so that's gonna be destroyed. We see an attempt here of Dr. Goldfish to try and push. Try and take this out. And an airfield destroyed here. So Marikar is taking this opportunity to push as well. We have on the left side, Dark coming in. And Excal has to choose. Either he helps in over here or he helps over here. And he's choosing to take out the Army of Dark. We see a leaflet coming in as well. Over here from Mr. Markar. Does it drop? Does it drop? Very nicely dodged here by Team Excal. And here come the Comanche. Absolutely obliterating these quads. Continuing the assault. Humvee's now coming in as well from Markar. Man. He's being absolutely ruthless. And this whole big army of Team Excal has been cleaned up, wiped, and destroyed. And not even that many losses here for Team Marikar. I was like, oh look, it's a blob of units. No, it's just workers. Like, they, they don't have anything anymore. <laughs> they don't have anything. Uh, the income per minute for Pepsi is going down to zero here. Like, literally got nothing, man. You got nothing. I think that push we just saw was the last hurrah. And it didn't work out. Let's see. Oil's getting struck with an artillery barrage from Mr. Excal. Will it hit? It kills everything. But the question is, does it really make a difference at this point in time? Team Marakar is just reigning supreme. Okay, those things, don't, don't do that. You're giving money to, uh, to your enemy there, Mr. Marakar. A-10 again on another airfield. So just like the previous match... It is the airfields that are always under attack, and Team Excal knows it. They know it, man. They know it. It's a victory for Team Marakar with all them Comanche and the constant attacks. I have to say, man, that was one intense match. Marakar played it like an absolute legend. I want to see some... Uh, Let's see. Let, let's see some Marikar plus 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 in the chat. Come on, guys. Let's see. He did so well. He did so well. Not saying his other uh, teammates didn't do well. They did. They did. But recognizing what to do, when to do it, 
and how to do it is not easy. And Markar delivered. We saw a very nice Terra Tech early on as well from Staz. Uh, that was that was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. Uh, but I have to say, man, Markar just scared the crap out of everyone with his Comanche, forcing Team Excal to stay in their base and not get out. Very limited amount of attacks. Because look at this. When there is an attack, Comanche come in with the rocket pods. And look at this attack I'm showing now. Zero Comanche died. All the quads died. If you do the math on something like that, guys, it is very scary. That being said, you can see that these are pro players here. Dodging the leaflet. Very good from Team Excal. But then again, those Comanche. Ah. Uh, KT Gnome says dark. Plus, 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 plus. No, no, no. That's the that's wrong, wrong player. Yeah, Marker. Plus, 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 plus. Yeah, man, he did really well. He did really well. Oh, man. That was so good, right? That was so good. All right, let us move on to the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? We are already going to match number five. Ziri says, that's a replay or... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a replay. Uh, XCAL stream it a day ago, right? Yes. So these matches that I'm showing you guys have already been played. Um, and... The links to the players are in the description. So almost all the players have YouTube channels. That's why this tournament is called the Streamers Cup. Um, the thing is though, when you're watching the games, you're watching it from that player's perspective. So I'm replay casting, so you guys get a whole global picture of what's happening in the match. So, you know, it's more complete, essentially. But yeah, you should totally check out the players. If you're seeing anyone here tonight and you're like, damn, this guy good. Check out their channel, subscribe, maybe leave a comment, say, yeah, well played. Because they all streamed it from their point of view. So if you're curious how that looks, you can do that, right? I mean, that's really great. This is just cool. This is cool, right? Uh, uh, Alk in the chat says, Comanche gods have been kind to Marakar. And Major Foley says, damn, those Comanches are insane. Yes, they were, man. Yes, they were. But let's jump into the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's uh, gonna get intense here. I'm actually gonna pause for a second because, uh, let me see, is it, is it? Yeah, okay, let me pause, because I could pause. You know, like I said, it's a replay. And we'll go over the armies uh, real quick. So I don't miss it, because I actually don't know how this is uh, laid out, like because it's a, kind of a free-for-all map. So we have, uh, let's see, Dr. Goldfish, doot, 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 doot. Right, okay, so it's left versus right. Okay, that's very convenient. I thought it was going to be diagonal. No, it's left versus right. So, on the left, we have an Air Force for Staz. Oh, shit, man. Air Force for Staz. That is very nice. Next to him, he's got his mate, Dr. Goldfish, as Tank General. That is an excellent combination. Air Force and Tank is much loved. Everybody likes it. Super Weapon General here for Excal. Oh, man, so we might see some alphas in this match. And Pepsi over here as infantry. And they will be facing Team Marakar, which will have Hami over here as Demolition General. We have Demolition General for Dark as well. And we got Laser General for Marakar. Not the best. And we have Green here, SPL, as infantry. Infantry will be able to do a lot of damage here to uh, the Air Force. But if the, the Tank General over here from Goldfish, if he backs up the Air Force with Gat Tanks, eh, the infantry will have mixed results, right? That's, that's one way of uh, looking at it. Got a drop coming in, going straight for Mr. Hummy. In the meantime, we also have a drop going for the Air Force there. So let's see, that's a dozer, not going to do too much. And we have a... Ooh, what is this? Yeah, that is not the best here. Okay, that gets crushed pretty easily there. So Markar now trying to get a barracks up. And wait, there are a unit... Oh my god! That's a scaffold... The scaffold got destroyed there. And the Dozer getting laser locked. This is not good for Marikar, the orange player. He really needed to do some damage with this drop. And his Dozer... What is it? Dude, there's a unit right here! Oh my god, the Scaffold gets denied again! He just lost 1,200. A missile defender. And in the meantime, hasn't been collecting. This is really painful. And the Air Force didn't have to spend extra money. He just literally has the ranges for the capture. Oh man, that is painful, man. That is painful. In the meantime, we see down below the blue player, that is Mr. Pepsi. Terra Tech attempt didn't quite work out. And this is a very scary outpost here. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on Hummy. How's he going to deal with this? He's going to need some uh, help from his mates. And we do, in fact, see Dark Nine coming in with a technical... Uh, uh, drops off a terrorist. But he's not firing. He's not the... Why you no fire? 
Ugh, this is a problem with uh, Demolition General. You gotta attack with the terrorists or force fire the ground. Because when they die, they don't explode. It's just with Demolition General. It's very weird. We got some uh, more drops coming in from Marakar here. He kills one truck. And does he kill the second? Yeah, he does. That's nice. That's nice. And drops off more missile defenders. So he's continuing the harassment here. But let's see what's happening with the Air Force. See a Comanche going up. Uh-oh. Still Comanche ready for Staz. Uh-oh. Guys, we saw the previous match, right? <laughs> we saw the previous map. But in the meantime, props to Pepsi here. The blue player completely eradicating Hummy. Demotrap takes out a Dragon Tank. Very important. But the pressure is mounting here because if Team Marakar is without one island, that is going to hurt. If they're on three islands versus the other guys on four. And, ooh. Ouch. Okay, not, not the best drop here from uh, Marakar. I think he just wants to be, like, quick and just, like, do a very quick... Oh! Yeah, this is, uh... Ugh. Marakar was doing great last match, but in this match, he's not finding his mojo. It's, uh... The drops are not exactly working out. I think he just wants to quickly drop off units and quickly deal damage and then look elsewhere, but if he's not careful, he will lose the units because he is fighting pro players. He killed a dozer here. I think he's trying to prevent the super weapon uh, Alpha Auroras from going up, but still. In the meantime, whoa! Did everybody just... Okay. Everybody just quit. We're four minutes in! Damn. Oh, man. That's a big blow, guys. That's a big blow. Marakar could not find himself in this match, neither could Hummy. And they just quit, man. Oh. Yeah, I could already tell you, that is very bad. Like, I mean, as in I feel bad for them like that, because these are team games. And these are the kind of things that can throw you off, man. They can throw you off. You saw what Markar was capable of in the previous match, but... In this game... Getting the, the scaffold denied here... Twice. And losing that dozer really hurt for Marakar. And at the same time, we saw Hummy on the back foot trying to survive against Pepsi. So both of those players probably feeling uh, pretty frustrated with this match, which is very bad. If the mood changes, if the mood changes in a team, everything changes. Everything changes. This, uh, this could actually be... I don't know, man. I'm, I'm really praying. I'm really praying that the next match... The guys get their mojo again. It is important. It is crucial. Because if you have that feeling of, ah, things aren't working out. If you have that, you just can't help but miss micro things and have failed strategies and stop communicating with your teammates. It is going to get very difficult. Team Marokar needs to recover. Not necessarily from the score that is 3-2, but from the mental blow of this match. Can they do it? I don't know. But if somebody can do it, it's probably going to be Team Marakar because these are very, very top-tier players. Oh, man. Let's see. Match 6. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Let's see the reverse. Let's see the reverse. It is going to be almost crucial for Team Marakar to win this match. Not necessarily to just even out the score, but also just to kind of get yourself feeling all right again. Like, to deal with that blow. Oh, man. Let's see. Down below, Hami, now as Infantry General. Next to him is Super Weapon General for Dark Nine. We got Tang General for Marakar, immediately sending his dozer forward. Air Force General for SPL. Good armies. And they're facing off against Staz as infantry, who will have to be aggressive here. See a lot of beacons already, right? Marakar immediately with the beacons. And uh, Pink here, Dr. Goldfish, Laser, Excal, Demolition, Pepsi, Demolition. Sending a worker straight in. What the hell? <laughs> Pepsi, what are you doing? Pepsi getting confident, guys. <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi getting confident. Don't tell me this is going to work. Don't, don't tell me this is going to work. Okay, then I can't believe it actually reached 77%. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. Nicely done by Hummy. Okay, so Hummy's most likely going to find his uh, mojo once again. Let's see what's happening here. We've got a bunker from Staz. Very nice position here in front of the War Factory. So this actually really sucks. For the orange player that is Markar, he might even need to sell this because it's just 
this bunker is going to be able to hit some of the units as they're coming out. In the meantime, we see the infantry general denying any oil captures. Oh, man. We do have a dragon tank out, though. And look, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this bunker. Look at the damage dealt by this bunker. Minigunner dealing some damage. Dragon tank finds himself in the base of Mr. Staz. This is what we love to see. Marakar coming in blazing hot. But there's a good reaction here from Staz. Staz is, uh, doesn't even have a war factory himself. He's just going for barracks. He's going for defense. In the meantime, we see an airfield going up here from SPL. A bit late here. Oh, he's got another one in the back. We need to see some air support. And it's going to be hard to give air support when there's just infantry coming out. In the meantime, we see attacks here from the blue player that is Pepsi. Has uh, Hummy done any damage down below? Doesn't look like it. In the meantime, we also see Excal doing some very good damage, doing a nice terror attack here, cutting off the income of Dark. This is not good, guys. This is not looking good. This is not looking good for Team Marakar. Definitely not. Terrorists move again, three quads. And do we have anything to do with this? The terrorists can pop open an attack outpost of the infantry general, and then the quads can take out the RPGs. This is not looking good for Hummy. He's got his units in the back here. He just took out the technical of Excal. Oh, man. Parking the terrorist. Uh, is he just going to leave it there? He might leave it there. Yeah, he leaves it here. He's like, screw it. No, he's going for the trucks. Out. Out. Ah, it's fine, man. But Hummy is uh, in trouble. Definitely in trouble. We got a technical coming in from Excal. What's inside? It is a terror tech. And hitting the war factory. We see one command sheet now from SPL, but... We need to see some more air support here. SPL, he's got Stealth Comanche, but not many. And if you look at what Team Excal's doing, they're just pumping out the stuff. Look at all the oils taken as well. Goldfish having a great time, man. He's just pumping out a whole load of these. And Tovies can work very well against Stealth Comanche. If you have enough Tovies, those Stealth Comanche will have to think twice about engaging. You really have to micro it with Chinooks if you want to succeed. Comanche now at the top. So we need to see some damage dealt here by SPL. He can even try and take out the trucks, take out the oils. He needs to do something like that. In the meantime, again, Hummy being pushed back by Pepsi. Terratech coming through. And doesn't quite take out the supply. This is going to be very difficult. We've got a mini gunner and another outpost. Okay. Good from Hummy. He's going to be able to hold here. And the technicals of uh, Excal proving to be difficult to deal with. We now see Comanche finally reaching the base of Team Excal. Doesn't take out the strat. It's surprising. It's always a nice key target. Where's he going to? I think even SPL is not finding himself in this game here. He's given the enemy too much time to come here. And uh, Goldfish even not caring, man. <laughs> it's just like, I don't care. I'll QQA. Got a beacon here from, uh, from Staz. SPL is uh, killing an oil there. I do think killing this would have been better because you get a lot of XP for it as well. And Goldfish has a massive army. And denying the search and destroy on all these Humvees is very important as well. Right now, Mark are in a world of trouble as his war factories are getting destroyed. He's getting a new one up inside of the base. You see one Raptor out. When you see the enemy going heavy on the Tovi spam, it's always better to go for Raptors rather than Comanche because one Raptor with laser-guided missiles, that is this upgrade, which uh, SPL doesn't have. If he did have it, then one Raptor can one-shot one Humvee, assuming the Humvee doesn't have veterancy. Even Dark, the Super Weapon General, is coming to help out with a Humvee, an expensive Humvee at that. In the meantime, we still see the continuous pushes over here. We do see Humvee re-establishing this income here. That's very important, so he's doing a good job there. But this blob of Humvees is just very difficult to deal with. Dark helping out very nicely here with this one Humvee. And finally, this is getting cleared up. Finally. But look at this, guys. It's a whole new army ready to go. At the same time, we do see the blue player that is Pepsi taking more cash. We see the oil taken by Excal. So Team Excal is not messing around. They are continuing to get more money in this match. Oil under threat. 
We do see quite a few oils destroyed, but there's still some oils here that belong to Team Excal. Goldfish playing this very well here. I would like to see an ambulance. It's always good to get an ambulance, because then, like, a nearly destroyed Humvee here would come back to full health, just like that. So it's always good. Good to get. Minigun is now coming in and capturing the base of SPL. Oh, man. Oh, man. Staz trying to humiliate SPL a little bit here. Gat tanks dealing good damage. We'll be able to clear these minigunners, I think. There we go. Nicely done by Marikar, keeping his mate alive. But all these Humvees, though. If only we saw Alpha Auroras or something like that to try and clear these blobs of Humvees. Because look at this. Look at this, man. Off the conveyor belt into the base of Team Marikar. It's crazy. It's crazy. Look how many Tovies. They're actually killing a Raptor. Are they? Are they killing it? Let's see. Yes, they just killed a raptor, guys. That's how many Tovies there are. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta be careful with the rap. Gotta be careful. Ooh. Almost died. This is gonna hurt so much, man. The confidence of Team Marikar. We do see Dark helping out here, but he needs to get some alphas, man. He needs to get some alphas. And I think uh, Goldfish is aware that, hmm, alphas could be a problem here. So he's choosing to go straight down, straight to Dark. There's a semi-exposed strategy center here. Dark is almost level 3. So if he gets a couple more kills... Ah, uh, here we go, boys. Here we go. Here we go. This is what it's a... What? What just happened? Huh? You saw that, right? What just happened? Wait a minute. What the hell was that? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, freeze. Let's pause this. I wanna... What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Let's check the replay there. How did that alpha die? How did alpha... How? Oh my god, he killed his own alpha. Did you guys see that? He killed his own alpha because his tovies were striking a spy drone. And the splash damage of hitting that spy drone killed the alpha. I mean, there's bad luck and then there's this. What the hell? I've never seen something like that. Talking about having the worst kind of luck in this situation. That alpha needed to strike and literally flies over the spy drone that's being fired at and the alpha dies. That is that is insane. That is dark. <laughs> dark just quits. He's like, fuck this. <laughs> oh my god. Dark surrenders, Marikar surrenders, SPL surrenders, Hami surrenders. Definitely well played here by Team Excal. I've never seen that. Man, you know, this is what I'm talking about, right? This is what I'm talking about. When it's like everything suddenly gets jinxed. When when you're when you're not feeling comfortable, the weirdest shit happens, right? Like like, I don't even know. Can you can you say that's just bad luck? Or like, you know, some weird sort of way how life is just working when you're feeling like shit just more bad things seem to happen what the hell are the odds of that happening what the hell are the odds of that you kill your own alpha that's locked on it's supersonic you can see it's going fast and it dies because you accidentally kill it uh feels bad man <laughs> feels bad uh but you know there you go it's uh 4-2 for team excal and this is the thing i was afraid of because now Team Marikar had a, re a really unfortunate match, right? Match 5, not the one we did. The one we just did was match 6. So match 5 went very bad. And now match 6, they also lost. So the score is 4-2. And they kind of have these bad juju vibes going on, probably within each other, within the team. They got to shake that shit off. How are they going to do that? How are they going to do that? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to see it happen in match 7. Match 7... Here we go. On Thy Kingdom Lagoon. Let's see. Even this one, I'm going to pause the replay at first. So we can uh, see where all the players are positioned. So we got... Okay, so that's pink. And that's blue. And that's purple. And that... Okay, so it's top versus bottom again. So that is nice and convenient. So top is Team Excal. Bottom is Team Marker. So here we go. Team Excal. We got Dr. Goldfish as Dr. Thrax. Next to him is Mr. Pepsi as normal USA. 
to the right, we've got Infantry General for Excal himself. I wonder if we'll see Lixis or Migs again, right? And we have Toxin for Staz, and they will be facing against Team Marakar, consisting of SPL as Toxin. We've got Demolition General for Dark Nine. We've got the red player Hummy as Normal USA. And last but definitely not least is the Almighty Marakar as Tang General in the orange. Let's see. Look at how fast, man. Look at it. You can see the fury in his clicks. He's just like, I'm, I finished my supply half a second before it's finished. I don't care. I'm going to show up with some war factors. Like, he just, he breaks the laws of physics. He's mad. He wants his revenge. Um, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dr. Goldfish, what are you doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is this? Okay, I think he, he's uh, his terrorist wants to come in for a kiss. <laughs> Question is, on who, right? Who, who's it gonna be? Who's gonna be the lucky person receiving a gift in the form of a kiss from Dr. Goldfish's terrorist? Let's see. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So, uh, we got a nice supply truck coming in from Mr. Markar. It's gonna be good for scouting. And Diet Mario comes in with a donation, says, Beers on me. Thank you very much there, buddy. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how this match is going to unfold and uh, see if we can enjoy those beers, right? Because I do expect some serious aggression from Team Markar. In fact, I suspect so much aggression that it might be coming out to the point where it starts to not make sense anymore. And they will just be too aggressive and leave their base wide open or something like that. Because of that, that frustration with the previous matches, right? Nice oil deny there by Dark. Very good. And takes out a tank hunter and also reveals that there are, in fact, infantry general helixes out of Excal. So that is very important information. In the meantime, Dr. Goldfish ready to give a kiss to somebody. Uh, no kiss. No kiss today. Poor Dr. Goldfish. He'll have to create a new Tinder profile all over again because it ain't happening. Does this disappear? Is it? Okay, it does. <laughs> Uh, it's got Marauders. Okay, interesting choice by Dr. Goldfish to go for Marauders. And to my surprise, we're not seeing Marakar go very aggressive. In fact, he's trying to uh, deny oil captures and things like that. He's uh, definitely going the slow and steady approach, which is slightly confusing for a tank general. Especially when you're next to a Toxin, because you can be very aggressive to a Toxin general. Marauders now on the field. We see an Evac. Oh, boys, this is one deadly combination. The Marauders take out the Gats as anti-air. And these suckers can fry a Battlemaster in half a second. So with a good uh, good amount of team play here, this is going to be very difficult to clean up for Team Marakar. But actually, uh, I have to say, very nice of Hummy to come in with the Tovies and helps out and destroys this army without too much of a fuss. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Also, Pepsi coming in with a very nice spam here. 11k per minute. Wait a minute. How do you have so many so many Ks? Oh. I see. Okay, Pepsi actually taking the oils of his mates. That's going to put him on an insane amount of cash. And he's going to spam Tovies. We saw him already spam Tovies very effectively when he was in Air Force. So this is something he knows how to do. And Team X is like, hey, Pepsi, you do your trick. You do your thing. Go spam some Tovies. Let's see how this is going to work out. Looks like we see a similar strat here from Hummy. Hummy also on the 11k. Look at this. They also... Yeah, Hummy has the oils as well. That's red. That's Hummy. So we see both players doing the exact same strat here. Both Pepsi and Hummy. The question is, who's the better USA? And who's going to get the better support from the teammates? Got an annoying Marauder here. In the meantime, it's been uh, a bit quiet from... Uh, from Excal. It's got a Helix out. Nicely destroyed, nicely dealt with, and we see a big blob of Humvees coming in from Pepsi. Hummy, on the other hand, does also have a decent blob himself. We don't see ambulances from either player. A bit confusing. And we see a Helix going to the right. We might see a bit of a push coming in together with Excal here on the green player. That is SPL, but we'll have to see. So far, it's just Humvee Wars in the middle. Migs will definitely be helpful. We saw Black Napalm getting researched by both Excal and Marakar. Because a good amount of Migs can absolutely shred these blobs of Humvees. More Humvees coming out. No advanced training. 
no advanced training. Do we have a strat center out of these guys? Yeah, we have search and destroy and search and destroy. They really need to get advanced training, though. It's such an important upgrade because it makes the veterancy come in twice as fast. So vetted Humvees are a lot more powerful, man. Vet, like, a lot more powerful. MIGs coming in. A bit of a miss micro here from Excal. Losing a couple MIGs. Didn't need to. A bit unfortunate for him there. Uh, we see a bit of a miss micro here with the licks as well. Team Marikar is paying attention. I think they're finding their mojo back, guys. I think they're working again as a team. And they're having a good time in this match. Excal, on the other hand, has not really managed to do that much when it comes to denying the Humvees. Loads of Humvees, man. It's insane. It's insane. We've got demo bikes as well. Oh, man. This is going to be painful. Oh, nice. Very nice. And this is what it's about, man. This is what it's about. The middle. These kind of attacks. Got an A10 on the oil as well. Question is, who's going to pull ahead here? We do see Team Excal in a very good position here. Lots of Humvees. They do have some of that middle. Whereas over here, down below, one oil already destroyed. See, over here, both oils are still active. See the demo bikes? Eh, not bad. Got one, got one. We have some nice battle buses out of the green player. That is SPL. And they get destroyed by the MiGs. Also, oil destroyed. Very important. And we see a load of Scorps coming out. In the meantime, though, we don't see that many Humvees remaining here for Hummy. What is Hummy going to do? He has a lot of cash. He's got 7k. That's like 10 Humvees that he can, uh, that he can build if he wants to. He's low power. He's got a particle cannon as well. Interesting choice to go for the Particle Cannon, because he spends 5000 on that. Question is, would you rather have $5,000 extra worth of Vs, or one Particle Cannon? we we'll have to wait and see how that's going to pay off. Excal's MiG circling. We don't see uh, MiG armor here. Quite surprising. Oh, where's the scoreboard? Right, right, right. It keeps disabling. It keeps disabling. Don't worry, don't worry. There it is. There it is. So far, I have to say, the northern team is doing better because they do have these supplies. And that makes a big difference. See quite a bit of defense here from the green player that is SPL. We see some buses being created. And he's got Anthrax Gamma. He doesn't have AP rockets yet. Also a crucial upgrade. If you want to go heavy on buses, get this, guys. It helps deal another 28% extra damage or something like that. See a few random demo bikes out of dark. And these Humvees are just circling, man. They're trying to find a good place to attack from. In the meantime, you see Hummy the same. He's uh, constantly moving his Humvees about. Keeping an eye on whatever Pepsi is doing over here. But a random... Was that a German? Looked like it may have been a German. Dr. Goldfish only on 2.7k here, so he definitely doesn't have much going for him. See, he's only got this cash, and he is switching it up into black markets. He needs to do that. Or he will have no money later on in this game. Battle bus here as well, ready to reinforce. We've got a scud launcher here from Dark. That's a Demolition General scud launcher. Gonna strike on the tunnel. Things are gonna get very difficult here. And the game is starting to lag for me. I think a lot of people are moving a lot of units. And this scud launcher needs to be taken care of. Excal should try and take this out. Because one scud missile landing on these Humvees, and it's gonna hurt, man. It's gonna sting. We've got a lot of Scorps ready to defend this section. Hummy has to be careful as well. Nice napalm strike on that bunker. Takes it out. And here we go. Scud launcher destroyed, actually, by the buses here of Staz. And, oh, boys! There we go. Nicely destroyed with the demo bikes. Dark paying attention. Utilizing his demo bikes very nicely there. A beacon here as well. I think it's a Burton, maybe. We see the mix of Excal circling, ready to strike, ready to pounce on all these Humvees. Push coming in from Pepsi. Are we going to see the mix of Excal? Not yet. But we need to see more Scud launchers. We actually do see some over here. We do have some tunnels. So as long as these Humvees of Hummy stay close to the tunnels of Dark, 
Scud launchers can pop and deal an insane amount of damage. Here we go. Ooh. Pepsi paying attention, though. He's paying attention. And because he doesn't have missile defenders in here, these demo bikes can drive really close. Tow missiles do not lock on. They only lock on to air units. Another oil destroyed by an A-10 strike there by Pepsi. And so far, this money is still being collected by Team Excal. Slightly exposed Scud launches here. But there's going to be one big strike, one big attack. And it's going to be a big clash that's going to happen between blue and red. Between Hummy and Pepsi. And when that does happen, it's going to change everything. Because whoever wins that battle, if Pepsi wins it, then Team Excal wins. If Hummy wins it, then I think Team Marikar will just win it. In the meantime, we have a push on the left side. Just a bunch of units coming in. We've got a German on the bike and a Lotus Scorps. Putting more pressure here on Team Marikar. TNT charge placed by Jarman on the particle cannon. And here we go. Here's that strike. Takes out a load of the Scud launchers, but not the Humvees. The Humvees are what matters here. Scud launchers are not that expensive. There are only 1,200 each. And with two or three Scud launchers, these guys cannot attack. They simply cannot. It's too risky. Let's see. This got dealt with. Jarman randomly set off a demo trap. That should be a bit of a red flag. When, yeah, hey, where the hell set off that demo trap? <laughs> and here we go, Jarman on the bike. The particle cannon comes in, takes out an oil. And do we see a snipe here? No, we do not. And taken out. Very nice, very important. Other oil destroyed, airfield destroyed. And we need to see Markar paying attention. And he does. And Markar actually, as a tank general, is building MiGs. So expensive, but I guess also very important and very needed. Now, when is that big clash happening, guys? When is that big clash happening? We also see a whole load of super weapons out from both Hummy and from Pepsi. One good Moab, for example. Something at some point will happen, and it will make the difference. In the meantime, Excal's trying to pick off what he can. Taking out an oil again. Very important target. And uh, we have another particle cannon? Uh, let's see. Because I don't, I don't actually hear them. They don't even say particle cannon activated for observers. Bastards. Yeah, up here was a... Uh, looks like it hit an oil and almost killed the other oil. I'm just waiting, man. I'm just waiting for these USAs to hit level 5. Pepsi level 4, Hummy level 4. Once it's level 5 and you can get a Moab, you can obliterate this whole army. You see the push happening. We've got a beacon down below. Another particle cannon. Again, taking out one oil, taking out the other oil. Is this going to be it? Is this going to be the clash? I can see the MiGs of Excal at the top there. Ready to push. We need to see some Scud launchers here from Dark to help push in this attack. That's not the case. It's not happening. Here comes Excal with that strike. Takes out a chunk of the Humvees. And now things start to get very scary for Hummy. Forced to retreat. What is going to happen here? Hummy lost a big chunk of Humvees and dealt very little damage himself. Particle Cannon comes in, takes out a market of goldfish, takes out one oil. Will it take out another oil? Yes, it does. Very nice particle there from Mr. Hummy, the red player. This is going to get very difficult, but Pepsi at this point, if he pushes, it might just work already. Oh, man. Oh, man. No, 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 no. That's a lot of dead Humvees here to this building. Yeah, not many Humvees left, actually. But look at this. x coming in with a push of MiGs going for the tunnel in the Stinger site. And more oils getting struck down. Also, the map is just filled with beacons, right? Absolutely filled with beacons. Were you on any oil, Derek's says... Excal in the chat. We can have a look. He had no oils over here. This got destroyed. And this is Hummy's oil, so it doesn't look like Dark is on any oils. And this is so risky. Definitely not a good idea for Hummy to push here on his own. He's got to be so careful. New cannons. Oh, man! New cannons with neutron shells. 
That could change the name of the game because they can clear everything that's inside a tunnel with one neutron shell hit on a tunnel. It's crazy. We do see Team Excal still heavily fortified in this section. Very happy. Very good times collecting over here. We have some uh, attempts of harassment from Dark, but he's losing these scud launchers a little too easily there. A little too quickly. Scudstorm now going up for Mr. Dark. That is going to be a Demolition General Scudstorm, so that's going to be a very potent guy. Strike comes in here on the Palace, the Carpet Bomber, and the Artillery. Palace goes down to the hole, and again we see the neutron shells clearing the tunnels. And this is the thing, it basically renders the whole tunnel network system unusable. So very nice from Excal to do that. But I'm just waiting, man. When is, when is Pepsi going to go in with the push? He's got so many units. In the meantime, we have some Humvees from uh, Humanity, but it's not even that much. We even get a mild crash warning going in here. Huge amount of buses from Staz, but it's not an attack that seems to be coordinated. Pepsi is not pushing. And the MiG take out all these buses over here. In the meantime, we have a particle cannon striking over here. And we have a fuel air out of Hummy, trying to destroy the supply. Ugh. I think Hummy should have gotten the Moab upgrade and just waited a little bit with that fuel air because it's going to take a while before this thing is ready. And he's now notified Pepsi that he is level 5. So Pepsi will keep that in mind and be very careful with using his Humvees. You see, another particle cannon comes in trying to get Hummy low power. And he is very low power. Look at that. Minus 19 power. Even selling particle cannons to try and come back online. Big strike taking out a bus so far. Team Marakar is on a lot of pressure here, guys. Wait, let's see. Another particle cannon hitting down below. Over here. I think going for more power yet again. Ah, it misses this one. And we got beacons. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's a Spectre. Okay, I thought it was Moab for a sec. I thought it was Moab. I was like, oh man, it's gonna change everything. Uh... In the meantime, Dr. Goldfish pushing in on the left. Marakar surrenders, SPL surrenders. And we didn't even get to see a big blowout battle between Hummy and Pepsi. Come on, man. Come on, Hummy, do it. Do it. Big blowout battle. Let's have it happen. Scott Storm also ready to fire from Staz. Not entirely sure if that's needed because Staz is breaking through on his own with the units on the right. And that is it. Ah, oh, we didn't even get to see this blow up. Come on, can someone just drop a Moab on this? Oh my god, man. Oh my god. Excal is in the chat, so is Dr. Goldfish, so is uh, Pepsi. So a lot of the players who are actually playing this, right, because of the replays, are actually in the live chat. So if you guys want to talk to them right now, it's on the YouTube live chat, though. Just, just want to add that in there. But uh, yeah, I have to say, Pepsi did play it very well. It's true. He had 102 kills, 102 units destroyed there. Um, and he did a very good job at holding the line, making sure the other guys couldn't really do much. Uh, we did see Goldfish having a good time in the beginning, you know, feeling extra confident, saying that his terrorist wants to go in for a kiss for uh, somebody. But unfortunately, that terrorist didn't make it. It, it, it happens. But uh, Excal also very much on the money with the MiG strikes, ready to aid Pepsi when necessary. And that made it very hard for Hummy to push. I do believe if Hummy got Moab and then Moabed the army of Pepsi, if that was going to be a hit, which is, you never know for sure. But if it was, it would have changed the tide of the battle and it would have opened up this huge sort of way for Team Markar to strike at Team Excal. But that didn't happen. Pepsi was on it and kept everything and everyth everyone secure. So very well played there. And the score is 5-2. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. That is going to sting for Team Marakar there. That is going to be painful. We've uh, had seven matches so far of this best of 13. It's going to be a race to seven victories. So that means that if Team Excal wins two more games, they actually win the finals. They win the tournament. And Team Marco needs to win five more games. Ew. It's going to be a little difficult here. But uh, let's see the reverse, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for the next match? What do you think about the game so far, right? I mean, Team Marco lost, but they definitely put on a very good effort there and made it difficult for Team Excal to push. And this is still Team Excal, right? Like, it's, it's scary people, scary stuff. So, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into the next match. If you have been enjoying the games, hey, man, show some support to your favorite players. They're, they're in the chat, so it's always nice. And, uh, yeah, maybe consider liking the stream if you think the games are good, right? You know, hey, I'm not going to say no, just saying. 
winky face. And uh, yeah, let's go. We got a super chat from AHA30 saying, you're amazing, Leggy. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I didn't actually play, so it's it's the players. It's the players who are amazing, man. I'm, I'm just the messenger. So anyway, let's jump into the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for match eight? It's going to be the reverse. So let me also, oof, there we go. Switch on the score. Okay, okay. Uh, where's my, okay, all right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we go Staz. And the right now, this time, as Toxin General, he's got his mate below, the almighty Excal, as Demolition General. To the left of him, we've got USA, that is Pepsi. He's also from the USA, you know, a US flag, so kind of it kind of fits the image, right? And we got Dr. Gofish as Tank General, and they are Team Excal, facing against Team Markar, consisting of Mr. Markar himself as Toxin. We've got a Laser General up top for Hummy. On the right, we have Dark here as Infantry. On the very, very right, we have SPL as a toxin. Let's see how this match is going to play out. We have the reverse. And I think Team Markar could do with a victory here. I think they could do with a win. I think they would appreciate it. I think they'll be very happy. Because they kind of need one. It's starting to uh, hurt a little bit too much for them. Even though they are putting on a very good show. Let's see, we got an airfield from Goldfish. Oh, God. He, you're... Matt Goldfish, you're gonna do you're gonna do a dragon tank drop, aren't you? This is this is such a, <laughs> a goldfish thing to do. Most people will get two war factories as tag general, but you know, Goldfish has the, the cool strats, man. He's like he, he's he just knows what to do. There we go, he's got a dragon tank. And this terrorist wants to give a kiss to the supply truck. Does he succeed? The airfield is now gonna be scouted, that's very important. And gets taken out. And we have a terror tech coming in here from Mr. Marikar. And takes out the War Factory very quickly there. That is nice from Mr. Marikar. Let's see Excal returning the favor with a technical of his own. This time going straight to the base of humanity. And does he gun down this ranger? No, he doesn't. He, he, just, he just says, screw the ranger, man. Doesn't matter. Goes for one dozer. Goes for the other dozer. Does he get either dozer? I guess one. That's, that's not too bad. Terratech coming through, but look at the oil caps coming through here for humanity. That's one, that's two, and that's three. And in the meantime, we still see four, five, and six. And this is going to be number seven, eight. That's just, that's just how it's going to go, man. It's going to be USA power all the way here for humanity, just like the previous match. Excal still has a technical, uh, technical here, wants to be nice and aggressive. But down below, we also see continued aggression from Marakar onto Goldfish. Marakar... Uh, I mean, Pepsi now taking the oils again. Similar strats, essentially, and we have a Terra Tech here coming in on... Ah, oh, I didn't kill the airfield. That's a bit of a shame. That's a bit of a shame. I'm sure Dark's happy about it, but I'm sure Excal's like, damn it. Man, Terrors, can't you just blow things up? Because now there's a Helix out. That changes things a little bit more. Got a beacon down below because we have a very interesting tunnel here from SPL. Proving to be very effective here against Staz. Staz a bit, like, flustered here. Like, what the hell do I do? In the meantime, we do see uh, Excal. Okay, yeah, no, all right, all right, all right. It's all good, it's all good. We got middle now being taken by Excal. He's having a good time and ready to push in on Mr. Hummy up top. In the meantime, on the left, we start seeing the Humvee spam coming through for Pepsi. Very important here to clear everything. And this is going to put some pressure here. Team Marakar has to be very careful because these Humvees, man, they are ramping up in production. Not that many uh, units here to defend. We could see a push with the combined forces of Dr. Goldfish and Pepsi. Maybe. This money also has not been collected. Might be worth doing that. Pepsi now coming in, ready to clear some middle. Kick Marakar from there. In the meantime, we do see a push from Hummy trying to clear Excal from the middle. All the GLAs, they all want the middle, don't they? Look at these GLAs, so greedy. All want to go for that middle. And we now see that Helix. That Helix that escaped as the airfield uh, just about survived there for Dark. So Dark now contributing, pushing Excal out in the middle together with his mates. Some good team plays here. A Pepsi with a lone vehicle. Yeah, might not be might not be a good idea there for Pepsi. We do see some very strong aggression here from SPL. SPL has been keeping it up here and has been threatening the lower team here. Team Marakar. I mean team X now. 
And right now, here comes the cavalry. This is what they want, man. The, the Humvees to come in to clear up the mess. And that's it. That's going to be SPL cleared from the lower section here. Let's see. Who's got the middle, actually? We got a nice orange supply going up here for Marakar. On the right side, we see SPL as well. So, so far, the northern team seems to be doing a bit better in map control. But we do see Pepsi ballooning. Absolutely ballooning. Getting all those Humvees out. In the meantime, we do see some Humvees here from Hummy. Nice that he's included a few ambulances and the uh, strategy center over there. Actually, he took some damage. Looks like it was from a MIG strike. And I just got to be careful. Again, we have this standoff between the Humvees. And it's all about coming out on top in these big battles. And here we go. We have a bit of an engagement. Favorable position here for... Mr. Hummy, but his Humvees are not firing. They're firing at a spy drone. Oh, man. This might still be Pepsi's engagement, and Hummy mucking up the micro just a little bit here. He's not targeting the enemy Humvees the way he should be doing that. Oh, my God. Pepsi also not exactly... Both players are kind of mucking up the micro just a little bit, but now Hummy's got it. Okay, he's got it. He's paying attention. He did it. He did it. Ah... Uh, Goldfish says, lol, leggy, why you not see my helix? Let's see, where, where, where are your helix? You're going helix as well? Why are you tag generals going helix, man? Why are you going helix? Uh, middle being destroyed here. Hummy wants to get rid of the oils. In the meantime, we have a push on the right here from the Cyan player. That is Staz. Staz finally giving some pushback to SPL here. Let's see, SPL... Selling off his supply. It's been taken. Uh, it's been collected. All the money. And let's see. Dark still has a dozer here. He's getting command center. Good idea. Meantime, on the left side, we have a very nice tank army. And yes, he got a helix. Go fish. Did you do a dragon tank drop? <laughs> is that is that it? Or did you do the did you do a napalm bomb? Was that it on the on the strat center? I think that was maybe what happened, right? See my helix on the minimap in the red base. Okay. All right. Let's see, Humvee's now coming in to try and help on this side. This does kind of uh, open up the way for an attack from Staz on the right side here on SPL. Because if all the Humvees are busy over here, this right side is going to be somewhat unprotected. See some Humvees from Pepsi coming in as well. RPGs at the ready. And oh, boys, here we go. Mixed strikes. Doesn't actually kill much. Does he have, uh, does he have black napalm? I think he... Yeah, he does. So Dark, a bit unfortunate there. He could have killed more. He could have definitely killed more. Yeah, he's got Black Napalm. I'm surprised he didn't kill more. I only saw like one Humvee going down there. He should have been able to kill like four or five. A bit unfortunate for him. Now Hummy with a big cavalry of Humvees. Again, the micro man. Gotta be so careful. And Hummy gets a couple kills here. Very nice. This is a good engagement for Hummy. This is a good engagement for Hummy. No, stop moving. The spy drone trick. Very nice. And Pepsi not microwing his Humvees. They keep shooting on the spy drones. That's why everybody always gets these little spy drones on the vehicles. Because the Humvees will keep targeting those as opposed to actually targeting uh, the enemy Humvees. So it's like a nice shield that you can get. Demo bikes coming in from Excal. Proving to be very effective as well. And oh no! Dark, no, what are you doing? No, Dark. Oh, Dark. Oh, man. Heavy losses here. Heavy losses for Team Marikar. Losing the licks like that. And the demo bikes proving to be very effective. Uh, here we go. Another licks. Okay, fine. You've got licks. I see the licks now. I see the licks. Uh... Excal says, not a good concave Phi Alpha. Well, the problem, I think, is that he's not microing the Humvees to shoot the other Humvees. He's uh, kind of letting the default thing happen. And then you can see they st keep targeting the scout drones. Very nice here from Marakar with the bus. Dealing some good damage. So far... Oh, we got a... What's this? A Jarman. Oh, man. That's Excal's Jarman. We do have... Uh it should be easy to find this guy. There's so many dro uh, Humvees here. Just scan, maybe. Scout drones. How is this guy not being detected? Bruh. 
<laughs> he will just blow it up, I think. He should. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, he should. Uh, so good, man. So good. And that is actually a very good Jarman. That that guy dealt his damage, man. That guy dealt his damage. So far, Team Excal reigning supreme yet again. Having better engagements more than anything else, I think. I think the, the losses on uh, on the side of Team Markar have just been a bit greater, like 10% greater. And then it just begins to snowball from there. If you always lose 10% more units, eventually you're just going to have a small army compared to the enemy. Here comes a Mixtra! Oh. Oh. Well, that happened. Um, yeah. You see, things like, <laughs> things like that, you might not want to have happen. You might want to... No! Uh, I'm not sure who's coming out on top here. It's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Team Markar having a uh, bit of a hard time here. <laughs> nice demo Rebel Ambush there. Uh, helping out. But that is basically the army of Hummy destroyed. That is a lot of mix of Dark dead, and he's only got a little income, like, you know... He lost more than a minute's worth of income. Team Marikar, definitely not feeling comfortable in this match. And Team Excal, doing a good job, having good teamwork. Planning ahead, working together. Mix coming in from Dark. What the hell, man? Yeah, not uh, not going too great here for Team Marikar. Let's see, we've got a particle cannon going up. And similar to the previous match, we're seeing uh, the switch into super weapons. But there is just a big chunky army here of Pepsi. They could just... Team Excal could just push. They could just push. Excal in chat says, this looks like Team Pepsi, to be honest. Yeah, Pepsi's been doing a good job. Mind you, sometimes the micro could have been slightly better, but, you know, it's it's hard. And, oh, boys, that's a leaflet. Oh, boys. That's a leaflet. This can change everything. Where's that plane? Here it is. If it hits... Eh... No. Ah, oh, that would have been nice, though. That would have been nice. But now, Pepsi knows a leaflet was used, so he can feel a little safer attacking. So there is that. A 10 strike coming in. Takes out supply. But still, this money belongs to Team Excal at this point. Mix of Dark, ready to strike. Let's see. Uh, or not. See, are all the oils destroyed here? This oil is still available to destroy, but it's guarded by all this anti-air in the form of the Humvee. So it can't really get to... Can't really get there. Oh, wow. Okay. For a brief moment, I thought Jarman survived there. Nice of Mr. Excal to just take out an oil. In the late game, when everybody's poor, the oils start to make such a huge difference. Dr. Goldfish right now has no money. He's, he's What's that? One hacker? He has one hacker? Am I seeing this right? He's got two hackers. He's just got three hackers. That's that's it. Goldfish, you could do it. I believe in you, buddy. Three hackers against the world. Mix strike. That's a lot better. Yes. A lot better. And actually managing to kill one and bring two bosses down to the bunker mode. Send again RPG. I mean, sending in a worker. We see some uh, attempts of an attack here from the green player that is SPL, but he has to be careful. There are demo bikes out and about. And he doesn't want to lose those precious buses. Oh, man. Oh, man. Those demo bikes being ruthless here. They're being absolutely ruthless. Let's see. How many particle cannons? We've got three particle cannons of each player. And Dark also on no real money here. He's getting a few hackers. In the meantime, Hummy trying to do some attacking on this side. Pepsi is level 5, but still has two general points he can spend. Not sure if he's aware of that. Would be pretty important at this stage in the game to uh, use those general points. 
Oh, no, 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 no! Ah! Oh. Right in the fields, man. Poor Hummy. Trying to go for the oils. Oils that have been uh, in Pepsi's possession for so long. And let's see. No Scott Storms yet. But it would be nice to see one out of Excal, perhaps, as the Demolition General. Lots of buses again from Staz. The thing is, Dark is running out of money, so he can't really keep pumping out the MiGs. And that means these buses get to reign supreme here. Got a particle cannon striking over here on the strat center. Go for the power as well. In the meantime, A10 strike is gonna come in on what? Where's this going? All the way back here. Is it gonna make it? Bray. No, it's not. Okay, 1-8-10 actually got stopped there. Almost crushing the worker there with the with the husk of the A-10. That's pretty funny. And still lots of hummies. Bus is now doing a good job. And this is going to be very difficult to deal with for Team Markar at this point. They don't have MiGs anymore. And let's see. Particle Cannon goes on the oil. No messing about. Take out that income. That is a strat here. That's what they're doing. Laser tanks are a good choice. But we need to see some Avengers in the mix as well. Otherwise, these laser tanks will still get shredded. Also, no composite armor here from Hami. So he's kind of invested in these tanks, but... They don't actually work until you really invested in them. You need like six of them. You need Avengers, you need composite armor. You need all that, and then it works. Particle cannon. Go for the oils. Does he get the Shinooks? Lol, he got one Shinook. Nice. Low power here. Very important. And we see Marikar with a nice bus, dealing some good damage. And still more buses. Does Dark have any MiGs? He's got some. Looks like they're reloading even. Dr. Goldfish in chat says, what can I say? I'm always lacking eco. Let's see, you got 500... Yes, you got some money. You got something. Something. In the meantime, though, Staz just having a great time dealing an insane amount of damage with these bosses. Nothing can stop them. The only thing that could really stop this right now is Jarman. Um, okay, or, or himself. He could, he could kill his own bosses. <laughs> there is that. Got a leaflet, though. That's going to be a nice one. But look how far away this plane is. It might not reach in time. That's very important. Uh, we have a fuel air, not a Moab. Yeah. Again, Pepsi now knows that the fuel air got used by Hummy. Opening up the way for an attack. Palace under attack here. SPL does not have much left. His income is near zero. Got a, an interesting speaker tower helix from uh, Dr. Goldfish there. And this is basically it for SPL. He's got nothing left. A 10 strike on the income. Which keeps being destroyed and keeps being rebuilt. But they're managing. They're managing. Team Excal. Got an artillery barrage that comes in on the airfield. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dark. No. This is all he had. This is all he had. He had barely any income. And a full airfield gets destroyed. Particle cannon hits the strat center. Team Marakar being thinned out here. Anthrax bomb plays down, gets intercepted by the Tovies. No Anthrax bomb happening here. And we got a sneak attack up in the back here. One from Staz and one from Excal. Both of these guys are mates coming in strong. There is nothing to deal with this because the fuel air has been used. The anthrax bomb has been used. And the surrenders come in. Dark, Marakar, SPL, and Hami surrender. Very nicely played again by Team Excal. Getting another victory. Bringing the score to a whopping 6-2. Oh my god. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. Dark had so little 
and what he had got taken out by a perfect arty and right after we had two beautiful sneak attacks from team excal i have to say very well played here by team excal we had uh some very good attacks here the bus is proving to be very effective once the migs were gone but even when the, the migs were around there were some uh, questionable engagements we also saw some very nice action from the demo bikes but uh, I do feel kind of bad for, for Dark. He probably just misclicked a couple times there and lost a number of MIGs. And he was already on semi-limited income there, so that really hurt him. But uh, yeah, I have to say, still very nicely played there by the players. But this is actually putting a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on Team Marakar because the score is 6-2. It's a best of 13. And all that needs to happen is one more victory for Team Excal, and they take it. They win the tournament, whereas Team Marakar has to win five matches in a row. Now, we've seen some comebacks in our days, but this is going to be one hell of a comeback. They really got to bring it together here for the next matches. Let's see. Can Team Marakar do it? Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Let's load the next match. Here we go. Team Marakar, can you do it? Can you do it? We'll have to see, guys. We'll have to see. It's going to get pretty crazy here. Because we need to see Team Marakar kicking ass. Let's see. Pepsi down below here as the laser general. On the left, we have, uh, yeah, we can hear you, Goldfish. We can hear you. We have uh, Dr. Goldfish as an Air Force. I think he's very happy about that. On the left here, we have Excal as Tank and Infantry General for Staz. Very good armies indeed. On the very right, we have Team Marakar with Hummy as an Air Force. Also very nice. We have a Nuke General for Dark. Hmm, that could get a little difficult. We have SPL as an Air Force. And we have Marakar right here as the demolition so i'm not entirely sure if team marakar is going to be so happy with these armies because air force can actually pack a punch to a demolition general and also to a nuke general in the meantime we have two air forces here one red and one oh one red and one green but uh you know tank general from excal can actually really mess up the air forces See, we got a drop here from Pepsi. Building a barracks. Oh. That's gonna mess up this guy over here, Mr. SPL. He's gonna need some help, probably from Dark, the nuke general. And that's exactly what's happening. Battlemaster moving in. And gets laser locked right away. And actually gets out of there. Interesting. Not sure if that's a misclick. And look at the amount of units coming out of Team Excal already. Guys, the war machines are producing. Get ready for it. This is going to be a lot of spam coming in here. And in the meantime, we do see this Air Force, who's just a little disoriented here. Uh, we did see Technical coming in here from Markar to try and help out. But again, these players are busy with this little attack, this little drop. And it's giving so much time and space and freedom to Team Excal to pump out units and to start encroaching on the base of the red player that is Hummy. There's no air support from SPL. Because SPL is busy. Marakar was busy here. Dark was busy as well. Very nice ish, uh, initial drop. We see uh, both Raptors striking one Chinook. Mmm, SPL. That's not how you do it, buddy. And Goldfish having a great time. He's, <laughs> he's gone Comanche and he's put the beacon thing on it. So basically, the moment they start attacking, you'll see the text saying hello, and oh my god, man. This hurts, this hurts. Oh my god. Taking out some raps. Trying to get out of there. Did you just fire one missile and another missile? That was pretty impressive there. In the meantime, we see Excal with the units. Very nice and strong in the base of Hummy. Difficult to deal with, guys. This is very difficult to deal with. Hummy's trying. He's not managing. He needs a bit of help. But at the same time, everybody kind of needs a bit of help, right? There's still Comanche out and about. Uh, these oils have not been taken yet. Don't see the capture building upgrade either. 
Now let's see, this got denied here, it was an attack from Marakar. There we go. And yeah, going Comanche, so technicals can't really do that much against Comanche. Lots of wraps now from SPL. He's gonna have to do it. In the meantime though, I'm surprised he's not coming in to help his mate with those wraps. Go for the supply. There is another supply over here. And SPL now coming in and yeah, just engaging when there's so many Gat Tanks, instantly losing the wrap. I think SPL is uh, very much disoriented by that initial drop from Pepsi. The beacon here as well. And we see Command Center going up for Excal. As we're uh, getting closer to the mid game here, it's uh, becoming quite clear. Team Excal pumping away with the units. Keeping Team Marakar very busy. Also, the wraps are not really being utilized as well as they could be. I think that's, uh, that's gonna hurt Team Marakar in the long run here. Here we- Wow! Yes, baby! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! That was a very good strike, and this was absolutely necessary. Very well done by SPL. Very well done by SPL. He just wiped those Comanche from existence. My god, man. This strike right here made all the difference. Killing those Comanche. Let's watch it back. Look at this. Look at the split, man. He had to target each Comanche manually, and he did. Fuck. Very nice by SPL. That's what they needed to stay in this game. There is hope. There is hope. A couple more strikes like that. And Team Marikar can win this match. They can win it. But there is still the threat up here. The looming threat of all these units. See a lot of Gat Tanks. Don't see many Battle Masters here. Dark, you need to help out with other units. He's probably going to go for the Gat... Uh, he's probably going for the Gats because he's worried about the air units coming out of Team Excal. But Gats, you're going to be on the back foot. Here comes another strike from SPL. Takes out... Did he force fire the ground? He force fire the ground. Dark needs a micro this. Dark needs a micro. And there we go. Very nicely done. In the meantime, we see wraps out of goldfish as well now. And that's going to take out what exactly? Flying literally across the map. Oh no. Is it going for the airfield? It's going for the airfield. Is he going to get it? Goldfish messed it up. Goldfish messed it up. He could have done it. He could have done it, and it would have been catastrophic. Immediately, the dozer going to repair. Good man. We have an artillery barrage coming in, but if this is actually full health, this will survive the artillery barrage. The supply, probably not, but it's the airfield that matters. And no, don't don't land with your wraps. Don't don't land with your wraps. Uh oh. I think he's gonna land with his wraps. Okay, never mind. It does actually die. I think it's a level three then. Level three RT. Oh man. Carpet Bomber now flying in from Staz. He's been having a good time as an infantry general. Could get intercepted here by Dark, and it does. Nice. RT hits the supply. But let's see, there's a big chunky army here from Pepsi. And the Air Force that is SPL is pretty beaten up here. He lost one airfield. He built two dozers. Uh, okay. And... Seeing Raptors now flying cross map from SPL. In the meantime, we see Raps here. Okay. All right. I'm not entirely sure what all these Raps are. I don't think these guys even fired. Did they fire? I don't think so. Uh, okay. I think both uh, Goldfish as well as SPL are slightly disoriented a little bit. And now we see Humvees. Why do we see Humvees out of SPL? Uh, scratching my head a little here, um, because this is one hell of an investment now to make for the Air Force. Switching it up to Humvees like that, that's a lot of money, because you need to spend 2000 on the War Factory. You need to get the Humvees, which are 800 bucks each. You need to invest in a tow missile. Instead, you just got a couple more airfields. You can kill one Humvee with one wrap. But he doesn't have laser guided missiles, so okay, never mind, I guess he can't. He needs to get laser guided missiles. Strategy center is up, but it's already doomed to get carpet bombed here by Team Excal. And it's actually Goldfish's carpet bomber that's moving in. Going straight for 
the strat center. Does he also get a raptor here? No, he doesn't, but he does get two dozers. That is 4,500 bucks worth of damage with that carpet bomber. In the meantime, at the top of the map, we see Goldfish coming in with a Raptor Strikes, taking out a Supply, taking out a Dozer. Is that Hummy actually Dozer hunted? Yes, it is. Hummy getting wiped clean here. With the team plays from Team Excal. Goldfish is attacking here. Excal is attacking here. We've been seeing Staz attack here as well. And now we have this overwhelming army from Excal. It's just marching on. Onto the next victim. Hummy's essentially kicked out. Oh, man. On all sides, on all fronts, Team Marakar is getting eradicated. Hummy's starting to float, but he can't really do much. He can't. He's got a strat center. What can he build? Shinooks? I mean, should he surrender and give his mate the money? I mean, I guess he could try to do that. Carpet Bomber coming in. Ready to strike the airfield, but there's also Dr. Goldfish with his wraps. Choosing to go for the command center. Marikar surrenders. SPL surrenders. Dark surrenders. It is Hummy on his own. And did that carpet bomb just kill the raptor there? No. Alright. Okay. Well, damn. <laughs> that was... Uh, one hell of an aggressive match from Team Excal. Has to be said. Very, very aggressive plays there. Nicely done. Look at Excal. 116 units destroyed. I have to say, very well played there. But uh, I think Team Marikar just couldn't find themselves in this game. Having a hard time. Especially the Air Force here. Um, Goldfish did a good job here with the Comanche. Taking out the Raptors. But, like, SPL did one awesome move. One very, very awesome move. This strike, this beautiful raptor strike. You can see the guy knows how to play. He knows how to use raptors. He knows how to do it. But he just kind of didn't get his vibe going. He got lucky that Dr. Goldfish didn't actually do a perfect synchronized attack here. So, as a result, the raptor survived. But SPL, man, was just not feeling it. It was just not having his mojo going there. And uh, as a result, hey man, it's Team Excal pulling ahead with a victory here. The final score, 7-2. Team Excal, the winners here in the 4v4 Streamers Cup. Absolutely amazing matches. And even though the score is what it is, Team Marikar still gave it their all. They still did a very good job. And I have to say, man, just great games and great to watch. Of course, this was all uh, replays that I was casting for you guys. So if you want, you can actually see the player's point of view because this is the streamer's tournament, right? So all the people, or almost all the people who, uh, who you saw here tonight have their own YouTube channel and they live stream their point of view of these matches. So guys, I suggest you check it out. The players are linked in the description. So just click on the show more. You can find the players. So if you want to see point of view of, okay, Goldfish, you didn't stream it, did you? You snake, I think he didn't stream it. Uh, Xcal did, Marikar did, Dark9 did. Uh, like, go check out their channels. Show some love, man. Show some love. Give some likes and things like that. But it's always very much appreciated. My God, what an amazing set. I want to also give a big shout out to uh, RVB, aka Red vs. Blue, for organizing this amazing tournament. It was difficult to host because of all the players involved. Uh, but he did it. He did it. And we got some great games as a result. So, big shout out to him. Also, shout out to the sponsors Red vs. Blue, B Legacy, Arctic Dolphin, Alfie Ace, and Egg. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be stopping the stream here. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you want to see more of this, hey man, we're always listening to your ideas. So, if you like these kind of games, then please do let us know. Leave some comments. Say, yeah, I like this, or maybe change this, or maybe add that. We're always listening, man. We're always listening. So, uh, yeah, thank you all very much for tuning in. This will be Legionnaire signing off. Good night, everybody, and see ya.